Hey, Mark. Hey, Jerry, what's going on? I'm good, and yourself? Uh, working, trying to keep uh, keep the ball rolling forward. <laughs> I heard that. Hey, can you give me a call um, tomorrow sometime when we get off the, uh, when, we, when you get off? I don't want to do it tonight because I'm probably just going to leave my uh, Zoom up, but I'm really, really tired. So um, tomorrow, if you can give me a call. Yeah, sure. Uh, give you a holler. I think, do I have your number? I think you do. I'm going to put it to you in this uh, private chat right now. All right. Um, hold on. Got it. All right. Yeah, I sent a message to you last week. and uh, You sent a message to me last week? Yeah, I don't know if you got it or not. I did not get it. Okay. Uh, well, hold on, let me. Uh, Which email did you send it to? Uh, actually, I sent it in, in the chat here while you were still on the call. You might have had to step away, and that's probably why you missed it. Um, but give me a second here. Well, let me let me put my uh, thing in this chat. Hold on. Here you go. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> All right. Yep, yep, I got it. <clears throat> yeah, that's not a problem. Um did you did you already get the added to the to the box that I did it on or no? Yeah, yeah, I'm already on the box. Okay, good. So yeah, we'll deal with that later. But uh, okay. um, I'm I'm gonna step away for a little bit right now because um, I'm gonna go lay down for a bit. I'm just tired. I understand. Uh, trust me. <laughs> by the time I by the time I'm done with uh, with work tonight, I won't get home until about uh, just shy of two in the morning. Wow. Um, and uh, you know, so I, I got an hour and a half commute each way to get to get home from work and to get here work um so you know it is what it is got to keep doing it until i get that uh that process all in order so i can i can just worry about being the being the uh, administrator and executor uh so once that ball starts rolling hard i got, I got plans <laughs> i heard that i'm with you on that All right, let me step away. Um, yep, we'll yep. talk tomorrow, but uh, I'm going to go. All right, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow morning. All right, no problem. All right, see you. All right.
Internet connection is stable.
Hey, Laurel, are you there? BJ, yeah. BJ, BJ is, doesn't have the link. He's just called, just called me wanting me to send him the link. All right, hold on. I had a, I had an issue here at my house, so. Okay. All right. Fam, where was my link? <laughs> what link? To the this, to the class. <laughs> Jeez. All right. I always at the I always at the last minute. All my students like I get these emails with like long explanations as to how to pay, why they can't make it, what classes they need, and. I'm just like, we got to start class eventually. <laughs> no, once we get the website up and we have all the packages put together with Jay. It'll yeah, it'll be easier. More organized and shit that we could offer him. Yeah. Um, all right, let me share my screen. I got a bunch of new stuff to show you guys. Uh, you can go ahead and share if you want. There you go. All right, we good? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna show you this new folder, equity. Couple books that I downloaded that are, uh, you guys are all gonna get these. I'm gonna post everything, I'll forward them to Laurel, she'll post them to the group. Um, 
<laughs> These Blackstone's commentaries, very, very important. I just found that out today. I'm going to go over a read. It's between Tam, this girl Tammy, I think her last name is Pepplebaum. Homegirl is wide open with the third eye. And she has a great foundation of everything that we did. So I can do this read and everything that we've worked on so far, I could pull forward and show. It shows us how to record things in court. It shows us the common law name, the proper name, the familiar name. And she states that the last name is owned by the crown. So whenever we're stating our name, it should just be first and middle. And this girl is wide open. I recommend, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to go, I'm only going to go through about maybe 10, 15 pages. Because I want you guys to read it. And it's, it pulls everything in and it starts from the first charter. And it explains how we're just, you'll see when I go through, it explains that we're cattle and just forest foraging animals that have rights and privileges. And until you show that you, you're a man with thought, you're considered dead. And then when the way that we show that we're alive is all lowercase, first and middle name. So that's why you did the copyright, the common law copyright, you copyrighted your last name pretty much. The crown is the owner's the last name. So your name decree, it would be dropping the last name and just in your first and middle. So mine would just be Peter Joseph. You still have the private name, which is last name, comma, first name, comma, middle. I'm sorry. So the, the proper name, the proper name is first and middle. So, but she speaks, this girl Tammy speaks about Blackstone, so I downloaded some Blackstone stuff. It explains what the citizen is, it explains what a federal citizen is, it explains how you, what you were and what you are now. And when we get into this read, you're going to see some really, really interesting tactics and in how she speaks and how she pulls everything in together. Um, I have the 709 done, going over to 706 and the SS5 tomorrow, or Saturday, I'm sorry. Those will be done. Uh, what else? My new executor letter for court will go over tonight. I'm going to go over more laws that protect us and how it doesn't protect them. I'm going to go over more court procedure, how to discharge court. Um, I don't know if a Nils here, Nils case was dismissed. Um, he's, I don't know what he's doing, but his case got dismissed. Now he's going into federal court with the bill of complaint. That's another thing. The bill of complaint is finished. The memorandum of law and <coughs> me and Laurel got it done. And, uh, what else? There's just so much. I got a lot to cover, a lot of new information. I'm going to be making separate videos on the UCC so you guys don't have to sit through here. There'll be shorter classes. I'll combine maybe two or three of them. I'm going to go over the important parts of the UCC, which is negotiable instruments, bank deposits, wire transfers, letters of credit, which is UC Article 5. We'll go over documents of title, which are UCC Article 7. And then Article 8 is investment securities, which is, I think, the most important. And then what governs everything, your secured transactions, is UCC Article 9. This is how you start buying stuff. And I'll send a picture to Laura, and I'll show you guys the last steps of my secured transaction with my OIDs, the 8281s. The and we'll go over the UCC, my filings, the UCC 1, the assignments on the UCC 3 to the Treasury. I'm about to show you all this stuff. All right. Ooh. What I'm moving on to from bills of equity um, are suits in chancery. Um, I have this new document called, uh, it's a forgiveness document. And this cor corresponds to your executor letter. So I'm going to get into this. I'm going to add it to it, um, some Title 26 stuff. Uh but this is a general template and I'm real and from this read, you're going to see the house of your last name is how important it is and the, what the great seal does. And you, you see, I'm just excited right now. All right. Put this down. Let's keep looking at myself. All right. <laughs> no, cause I look over and I look and I see I'm like, all right. Okay. Let me, all right, so I'll keep going over this. Uh, 
boom, I got a complaint in here for a, beer, uh, a pure bill of complaint. <clears throat> uh, again, I'm just, I'm not going to read it. This shit is boring. I don't want to put people to sleep, but this is, I just want to go over some of the stuff that I had that, that I have downloaded. <clears throat> um, so this is a uh, pure bill of complaint, a bill in equity. It's another example to go over. I thought it was cool. Um, here's your breach of trust affidavit about uh, an obligation with the fee schedule. And then I had, you know I mean, the fee schedule. So I'll be looking. This is all new stuff that I downloaded. I'm not going to go over anything right now. Um, but, all right. So this is another good read I'll pull up. All right. So here's some of Barack Obama stuff and how he created his uh, tax exempt organization. And there you go, the Barack Obama Foundation. I'm not gonna leave this too much. It's got some of his personal information up there. Um, but yep, I have Barack stuff, um, how he sets up these organizations. Um, I was going over it with one of my friends. Uh, where you, um, so this is where your silver surety bond comes in and you open up these organizations with three pieces of silver. And we'll get into all that and uh, so yeah, I mean, this is Brock stuff. I thought it was cool. Uh, it's not gonna be shared to the group, just to you guys. Um, what else? So there's, I got law notes on equity. I have, uh, this is a good one for foreclosures. So if you lost your house, this is how you can redeem your house back. U.S. tax deployments, foreign grants or trusts, foreign gifts. This is where you're making your donations, you're gifting to uh, reduce the public debt. This is how you're going to get your $11 million a year. And that read, it shows you how to gift it from your foreign grants or trusts. Okay, let me see the read. Okay, Jack Smith transcript, that's another good one. All right, so this is the bank acceptance. Um, Let you guys see this book. This is crazy. It shows you bills of exchange that are accepted, private acceptance. It goes in kinds of acceptances, bank acceptances. It goes into legal nego negotiable instruments. So this is another quick read for you guys. Another good, it's an old book. It's got a lot of sauce in it. Explains a lot of good stuff. Okay, let me see. I just gotta find the Tammy one. Okay, so this is, um, I'm not sure if it's David Clarence, uh, I'm not sure of the names. I just stumbled upon this, I just downloaded it today. I'm only about 30 pages in and it's blowing my mind. <clears throat> and I just had to share this with you guys, I had to. Um, it, all right, so let me get into it. So this is about the ordinance of William the First. Uh, it's the Avalon, Avalon Project under the medieval documents. And it has, so you click on these and it opens up the new window and then it gives you what we're starting at. So this is what's going on. And what this is about is it's separation, 
Come on, Moses. Where'd it go? Oh, I see. Okay. So it's, it's separation. It's a, sorry, the orders of William the first separating the spiritual and temporal courts. Okay, now what you're saying is he separate. All right, he separated you and your body, your body from your soul. Now there's two bishops. These two, uh, there's the Archbishop of Centerbury and the Archbishop of York. This is the House of Lords. The House of Lords is separated into the Lord's spiritual and the Lord's temporal. And then it goes into the definition. The House of Lords is the upper chamber of the British Parliament, of which the 11 uh, member judicial committee provides judges who serve the final court of appeal in most civil cases. In practice, the Lords sit as uh, committees, usually of five, but occasionally of seven. Two committees may sit simultaneously. All right, so this gets into, all right, so D.C., uh, part of Maryland and Virginia. Tammy said, absolutely. Now they're going all the way back to Lord's spiritual and Lord's temporal. You see, it connects itself to D.C. through this right here, what is called the House of Delegates. And again, back to the Bible, you have delegated your authority to somebody else. That's what vesting power means. Power is always vested. So when you see on my UCC ones, I say that I have the vested interest in those in the notes. It cannot be taken. It has to be vested. Even in the matter through fraud, corruption, everything else, absolutely. Now look at your constitution. You vested, you delegated your authority. You vested power in Congress. When you go back into the original Charter of Liberties and the Charter of Forests and Chases, the Charter of Liberties was handed out by Henry I in 1100. This is what they renewed and William Penn did the Charter of Liberty, establishing all his Pennsylvania shit. What they did was uh, they revisited it. Watch this and I'll show you. All right, what an affiant state. This is why I'm not doing affidavits no more. I'm about to show you why. The Bill of Complaint and the Memorandum of Law to support your bill is what you need for your restitution, discharging, all of that. And she says it right here. Remember, I tell everybody not to do an affidavit. All right. These are beasts of the forest, animals. So this is they're talking about us, animals having privilege within the forest, also including red deer, heart hind, roe deer, until rain, Edward III, buck doe here. This is where you're defined. Animals having privilege within the forest. You know you have rights and privileges, right? This is where you're chased. Some authorities gave different categorizations with roe deer as beasts of the forest and wolves and foxes and beasts of the chase. And it is probable that some animals were treated differently in different forests. See also venison, vermin of chase. Now, fiant, the word affiant. Animals have been privileged within the forest. Now, the definition, they're privileged, that the same definition that you're saying that they carry all the way through to when they give us privileges. How do you get there from that standpoint? What does it say under USC Title VII, Section 136? Subsection D, animal. The term animal means all vertebrate and invertebrate species, including but not limited to man and other mammals, birds, fish, and selfish. And as you'll see, they incorporated man and woman. And you're just, cons all you're considered, if you come in there, say I'm man or woman, you're just considered breeding stock. That's why we're, everything is Department of Agriculture. Tammy, it's here in the statutes at large. It's gained, uh, it's again reiterated all over. American jurisprudence and the statutes at large where it's just keep calling us animals. We're just vermin. When you look at uh, the first and second welfare theorem, we're pollution, we're not evolution. We're not devolving, we are pollution, many. Everybody asks me why I don't like affidavits. So this is where it talks about fiance, fiance, the excrement of a fox and other vermin reported by, reported on by foresters. 
Now, see, when we, we enter in the incorporate state of liberty, So how do you get from Fian to Afian? Afian. You're accepting their authority. When you go in and speak uh, something out of your mouth, declare something out of your mouth, you're appearing in front of the judge. You're granting them jurisdictional ability in the forest, and you're claiming that authority over you within the forest. Well, okay, so, but how do you get from Fian to Affidavit? Well, that's what it is. It's the excrem uh, ex uh, excrement of you. They consider excrement, they don't hear anything, you're dead. They're dead, you're dead. Let the dead bury the dead. That's true, yeah, I know they don't hear it, that's true. I know they can't hear it because if you were actually there living, they would get up and walk out because they wouldn't be able to do anything. Right, the court's nullified because if there's, uh, because if the living, if there's no fiction of law, if the truth is known, then there's no fiction of law and that's all that's in there is fiction. So when you're going in there with foreclosures or traffic court, mortgage or home act, it's all, it's all yours. You'll see when we get in here how accepting the mortgage is, is accepting the authority. All right, the definition of liberty under force and chase. Liberty, also known as franchise, the exemption by royal decree from general provisions or regulations, whether judicial, commercial, or equal. Uh, Ecclesiastical, by which powers could be exercised and uh, appointments made locally within manners by lords, uh, burgesses, cleric, clerics, or corporations, or regionally, uh, example, within honors. Tammy, within the forgiveness doc, the one I just showed you, the forgiveness doc where it said the house of Garza, you're coming into dignity. You're only claiming you are dignity. Exemption might also be claimed as a prescription example from time uh, memorial, which is what we're doing. We're be living, believing, living. Here's an, all right, so here's the actual charter chart. So here's another one. You open it, it goes into it. It's from uh, Henry the first in 1100. First, Henry formally bound himself to the laws setting the stage for the rule of the law that parliament and parliamentar uh, parliamentarians are of later ages would cry for a second. It reads almost exactly like the Magna Carta, which is a huge charter because the Magna Carta is sine D. Our constitution is Magna Carta. It's without a date. It doesn't have a starting date. doesn't have a death date. It keeps moving through time. The only thing in politics, the political stage or ism, now this is where it gets interesting. Listen, it only changes according to the market conditions. You are the commercial unit. So if you hold the majority of the wealth as a male, they're going to implicate feminism against you. Okay, what the, okay, so how does the Magna Carta become without a day? I don't know how else to explain it. Politics only changes according to market conditions. Okay, the Magna Carta is documented politics, right? At the time, separated powers, enumerated powers, right? Well, what happened was at the time of the wealth was spread across the board, right? So in order to separate a power, they were redistributing that power. They were going against that power. Then later on, when we came here, all there was in the United States at the time where the ground that was here where the United States of America is. The ground was only community. To redistribute community, they have to implicate the individual by constitutional theory. Take away the community's rights by reserving your rights over theirs. So that's your reservation of rights that we did. Affidavit of reservation of rights. Now we can go back and we don't have to do the affidavit. We could just do our reservation of rights. Market conditions change. And then it goes along. If the corporations hold the majority of wealth, which is what's happening now, they implement what? Environmentalism. Hold on, I keep losing my spot. All right, to redistribute the corporations. So now they're saying, well, Walmart, here, you're polluting this much land, we're going to find you. And they say, no, 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 I'm not doing anything, anything wrong. And the attorneys come in, they say, yes, you are. Here's a summons, you appear in court. This is what I'm finding you with. Where do these fines go? Environmentalism. Environmentalism. 
carbon credits, everything else, the attorneys are pocketing those. How are they helping environment? Bottling sunlight? That's what Gore was doing, right? It's so ridiculous. It's right in front of you. The FAA, the EPA, all these things, the SEC, the FDIC, insurance is supposed to be protecting you, right? So if the airline does something wrong and they're harming you from a group, what happened? They get fined. Where do these fines go? Who's making money off what's happening to you? The EPA is the same. All right, so we'll keep going down. Uh, public record. All right, once you read it, you're going to... Once you read it, you're going to get it because the bill changes by the address too, not the address. Like your address, you think that it means like a physical thing, an address. No, it's an address too. A verbal declaration, an address. Okay, so when the president comes in and does the address to Congress or an address to the Senate, he's verbally pointing at them and saying, now, you are the ones that hold them attained. Hold that bill of attainder, hold the bill of attainder, whoever they're notating in that bill of address. address. And then she gets into, let me keep going down. All right, the address, okay, right here. The address to the holder is the seal. The holder of the seal is whoever, because Congress has a seal, the queen has a seal. Now the great seal is just the stamp, your thumbprint and your signature. And you can do part of your thumbprint on the, on the stamp and then part on the paper. And that's the king's seal. That's the seal that they're talking about. So this is the, uh, because Congress, all right, so everybody has a seal except for you until now. That's why your seal is so important. It's absolutely important because that seal, they cannot do anything with it. You have to have your seal. Now you're the holder of the great seal and you are, the, and you are your own house. That's what Kennedy was referring to about becoming the master of your own house. You have to be in your own house. You can no longer be in the house of delegates, the house of lords or the house of representatives. And with the Atlantic Charter, the House of Representatives got global governance. It's not the new world order coming. It already is and already has been. Each house, each charter designates the house that has global governance. It always has. There was a house of Lombardi, house of Ur uh, Urso, house of Bowen. You have the Mar Magna Carta, which is the house of Italy. That means big charter. Magna Carta, big charter. That was the house of Italy. How does the House of Italy get into all the barons in England and take King John down to the Thames and threaten uh, to cut his head off? It's all of it. It's just the house. Whoever has the global governance is the house. Now you do. You have to rise up and be in your house. Use that seal. Because you're not just taking back your physical land property. You're taking back your soul and everything that's of your domain. Uh, Demence means of mind, period. And now you're ob obliterating their use of your domain. Uh, any other seal that alters yours. A notary seal, another private seal. All right, I'm trying to find where they talk about Bo because what they did with uh, your, for your monthly bills, what they did was they sent them a notice that they can't send them a bill in the all cap name. And when they do that, in accordance to Title 18, Section 1343, this is where you get into frauds and swindles. So if they're sending you mail asking for money in specific coin, that's fraudulent and swindling you. So once you send them notice that, you're, that they can only bill you in your first and middle name, you don't get billed anymore. Let me find where they're talking about it. I'm not too familiar with the document because I just... Uh, started reading it today so let me see if I can find Bo. Okay. What we have done, we have what happened was Bo had done this, noticed them, and they had sent him a half fast version of the modification. So tell them about the half fast version. All right, Bo, here goes Bo. They did one part, proper name in all caps, and then the street address, and then the care of temporary post location below. And that's just different. It wasn't quite there, right? I followed up then and said, USPS records show that the certified mail number 
was received by your corporation on August 17th, which, const which constitutes proper notice. Copy is provided for your reference. Your records were not accurately changed. This is an opportunity to make the changes accurately. Please modify the proper name, upper and lower case letters, rather than all caps as record. And then there's the uh, you send them the forgiveness doc. And be sure to place a temporary post location on line two. I spelled it out for them. So there's no mistake in now. Now, since that time, you have received no utility bills whatsoever. All the gas and all the lights are on. Everything is still on. And yet, they have, sent, they have not sent you a bill. I don't think that they have the ability without being sued. And this is where she brings in Title 18, Section 1341, which is the frauds and swindles. So by noticing all your companies, and this is where Patrick Devine comes in, and he talks about Standard Form 30, which is a contract modification liquidation. And so you take Standard Form 30, and you take Standard Form 1418, and instead of having the principal be billed and the shirt, okay, so if you, all right, I'll go into it. I'll pull up the forms and I'll get into it. But right now what they're doing is instead of billing a bond, they're billing the principal. And what the standard form 30, 14, 18 do is instead of billing you, they'll bill the bond. And I haven't listened to Patrick Devine. This is my first call that I listened to and I learned that from him. And as Sean sent me the vid the recording, and it's on 14, 16, 14, 18, 14, 14, standard form 30, and it goes into how we're contractors. Um, 14, 18 is the charge back. Um, and there's the 14, 16, which I think he says the charge off. I'll get into it. We'll, we're there. But this is, I'm just going to go a couple more things in here, and then we're going to move on. <sighs> I, all right, we'll move on because I'm not going to sit here and read. This is something you guys could read into, grow into, but you see where she's going. She's very, very in tune. Um, and she gets into all the first charters. She gets into how the UCC and the 12 tables are the same thing. The, all this stuff that they're putting out there is all, it's just revisited from back in the day, Babylon time, back before Christ, back when Julius Caesar was walking around. This is how old it goes. It's, but she's in tune. Um, like I said, I've only read about 35 pages. Um, I've been helping a lot of people out. It's a great read. And now I'm going to get into my executor letter. I'm going to get into the foreclosure process. And I'm going to get into um, creating your own checks. And then uh, that'll take up the rest of the time. Believe me. All right, Laurel, if you want to share, you can pull up the, oh, we'll go over the bill of complaint. So now let's go over the bill of complaint and the memorandum of law. Pull them up, Laurel. So this is what everybody was waiting for. This is the foreclosure one. Can you see my screen? I got to just minimize that. Okay. You probably still got it up. <sighs> I've got the notes here. Don't worry about it. We don't got to look that up now. Let's go over the bill of complaint. We'll shoot over the memorandum of law supporting it. Okay. And then we'll keep it moving. So let's, I'll recap to where we got to this point and where you should be. So for, we'll keep it to the foreclosure. First up, 1099A, your trustee, warranty deed, promissory note. Acquire that. 
then you register them on a UCC-1 assigned to the Treasury on a UCC-3. Send them the OID letter, send them the notice of tender, notice of set off in your private administrative procedure. Send them the, they have the 15 days to file the OID or you'll file it for them. Then you send, your, you're gonna do your negative check, your negative 1041V and mail that off, get a registered mail, UCC1, UCC3, assign it to Treasury. And that's your, then you wait 30 days, you send them the opportunity to cure. And then you wait 10 days, then you send them the default. And then three days you send them the non-performance then you get, then that's the your you take that secretary of state that's your certificate of default affidavit UCC one take that to your brokerage account dividend payout so now we've now we're in federal court now we're gonna sue them because they tried to foreclose on us and it's fraudulent and we're gonna stand on our square and put a stop to all this bullshit and let people get their lives back. All right, so, boom, I'm sui juris, never pro se. I'm at the top left over here. Third party intervener is a special intervener and that's in accordance to federal rules of civil procedure rule 24A. I don't, I haven't gone any, I haven't taken anything in the bankruptcy court. I haven't done anything with bankruptcy court. I know a couple people that in accordance to title 11 USC 363, that's an automatic stay. People file an automatic stay in bankruptcy. But other than that, I haven't utilized bankruptcy. I know chapter seven is a liquidation. The lien is optional form 90 and 91, Mary. That's release of lien and release of property. All right, so you address the district court, wherever you are, the county uh, and state. We're the claimant, we're coming in as the claimant. Um, we're going after the, if it's a loan servicing company, a bank, uh, whoever else, judge, clerk. They're gonna be the defendants. And there's the two parties. It's going to be an in rem proceeding. In equity, it's a maritime claim under federal rules of civil procedure, rule 9H. It's liable for review, answers of Polinsky, Peter, Joseph. Complaint invalidates uh, servitude and peonage and re all property of Peter Joseph Polinsky estate and trust. Then down here, we address the honorable judges of the district court of the United States and for the district of Oneida County, uh, New York. All right, go down a little bit. So this is the introduction and we're introducing ourselves. We're telling them how we're coming in, our status, our titles. So your, your 82 estate, your domestic 82 number, which will show you to be the executor, along with your executor letter, your, the forgiveness paper that I just showed you, and your WA Ben puts them in the trustee role. They have no other role to play once you send them that paperwork. They can only be the trustees. They don't perform, they're in breach of trust and now you can assess crimes, war crimes. Now they become felons. Then if they mail it to you, like Tammy just said, just went over it, Title 18, USC Section 1341, 1343, I'm sorry, it's frauds and swindles. So if they're mailing stuff trying to get a payment out of you, it's frauds and it's fraudulent. They're acting as felons and they get away with this through millions and millions of people. Oh, I've seen a sip of water. Okay. So we're coming in as we have a verified complaint comes now, 
Kalinsky, Peter Joseph, of Utica, authorized representative, executor, beneficiary. Uh, and then we got the more titles, uh, security agreement, um, lien creditor, entitlement holder, grantor, beneficiary, we put executor twice, oops, administrator, and basically the American National, National of New York, Title 8, UFC 1101, subsection A, subsection 21. All right, so we're bringing this bill of complaint. It'll be, for now, I just put for class, just State of New York and the City of Amsterdam, which are both corporations. We're appearing specially. Uh, we're under a restricted appearance. It's Rule E8. Uh, counterclaim against the Admiralty Maritime Claim, with respect to which has issued process in REM or process attachment and garnishment. Because we want to hold them accountable for what they did. If they owe us, they have to pay. Just like they, when they lean and levy your bank accounts, if you don't respond or balance your books, give me that, they take it. All right, so number one. In the interest of law, justice, man, uh, justice mandates a hearing, libel review pursuant to the laws of nations and the said claimants and the protection of their person, property, estate, and trust. Thereby enters their complaint of involuntary servitude and peonage due to wanton and malicious acts and threats, duress, corrosion, fraud by defendants in violation of the laws and form of the United States of America and the law of nations pursuant. And then it gives, we give them a list of all the violations. And all of these hold jail to prison time, fines. Uh, the Admiralty Maritime cause of action within the, within the meaning of federal rules of civil procedure rule 9H pursuant to title 28 USC section 1333, which gives federal court the jurisdiction. The district court shall have original jurisdiction exclusive, exclusive of the courts of the states of, and then just goes through two things, any civil uh, inside. Okay. Then two, so we're we'll over here back to the left. Two, any prize brought in the United States in the proceeding for the condemnation of property taken as prize. That's, that's just under Title 28 USC 1333, because we're going in for the, we want prize and booty. So the United States District Court is man is uh is the mandated district court of the United States to have de jure de jure venue to hear cause of action, etc. Pursuant to the da the da the Constitution, I said Perry first. AKA Secretaries of the Treasury, Mama Maldonado, Steve Mnuchin, alien custodians for prize and booty and foreign agents of the principal, the fund and bank at all. And then it goes into how it's intercourse, how the judges and attorneys are foreign agents and it's uh, foreign relations. So this is why you, we went over last class invoking your sovereign immunities and how it applies to you. So this is our premises part, our stating part. This is what the, the bank is trying to foreclose on our promissory note and our, war our trust deed, warranty deed. Uh, the bank has failed to perform on the agreement rendering a breach of trust. Orator, which is a claimant, that's us, we're the orator, if you're a girl, it's an oratrix. For the tax, okay, so we're going to ask the bank, we want to see the tax reports on the capital gains when they reissued our securities. And an unaltered copy of the original security, the cash receipt, the safekeeping receipt. SKR, safekeeping receipt under UCC 3-501, subsection B, subsection 2 subsection three and FASB statement of financial accounting standard. This is your 95 cash flow statement, which shows that it all came from your account, all from your signature, all from your applications. Can you go up a little bit or is it start? Okay. It starts right there. Okay. Then over to the right, right here. Then you see the schedules, RC balance sheets, line 13, and the RCE deposit liabilities, line 7, will prove that the amount bank deposited from your promissory note is equal to the amount they issued as a deposit liability owed to you. Putting a stop to all this garbage. Everyone, I think about all these lawyers and attorneys foreclosing and kicking people out of their houses and it's just that's their job 
the fuck out of here, man. Get a new life. The FSAB regulations, F uh, financial accounting st uh, st standards, 125 is your securitization of the accounting. Your FAS 140 is offsetting of the financial assets and liabilities. That's where you get your offset financial asset form uh, statement. Financial accounting statement 140. 133 is your derivatives on hedge accounts. Now the S5 is the B5 perspectives that they're talking about. Rule 424. Uh, B5 prospectus in the 95 cash flow statement. These are resource materials for understanding this process. The note is not a negotiable instrument anymore, it is a security. All the banks follow these standards. They set up GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. The banks are mandated by Title 12 USC to follow GAAP and GAAS. They have a local FASB and an international FASB. They also cover derivatives. FAS 140 is your recoupment. It relates to your UCC Article 3-305 and 306. Because you have a proprietary interest in a financial asset. All right. The defendant, so the charging part, we're saying, hey, the bank sometimes alleges and pretends that the said contract, which would be our uh, promissory note, uh, and trust deed is not an existing abidement agreement upon him and other times that he is under no legal obligation to perform said contract, whereas your orator charges the contrary thereof to be the truth. And that the agreement, Exhibit A, is a legal binding agreement and should perform on the part of the said defendant. Now this is where you get to the interrogating part. This is where if you, they brought somebody in for you to cross-examine them. So now we'll go to the memorandum of law. So we just call this, we didn't, this is just a plain Jane. The pro se won't be up there. We, she, Laurel just put this together for me. Um, I'm not, there's like 50 different rules here. We'll go through a couple of them. Again, memorandum of law. This is in support of your bill of complaint. The administrative comp, uh, that's how you def this is how you exhaust your administrative uh, procedure. That's the, the default process. That's how you exhaust your administrators. But yes, you should already have them in default. If you don't, it doesn't matter. You should still, you could still be in the process of defaulting them. Cause, so they're letting me speak for Mrs. Delgado in a foreclosure case in a national appeal court. And it's amazing for once, my first time being able to speak for somebody. And I don't know what I want to say. All right. Go down so I can read that a little bit in the memorandum. Appearing specially is the same thing. So we're just telling them how we're coming in. We're giving the law backing up why we're coming in specially. It shows it where, bop, bop, bop. Okay. Go down to go down to like six or seven or something. All right, stay right there. All right, so four, the United District Court. Oh no, I already read that one. Five, when warranty deed and promissory note were signed, they became an asset and cash item under Title 12 USC 1813, subsection L, subsection one. So what that means is when you signed everything that day, your promissory note, your trust deed. It became a cash item. It became an asset to the bank. And they've gotten capital gains from your asset. And there's taxes to be paid on that. And this is where Gene comes in. Gene kills them with taxes, man. Pay the tax. So this is the fact that the United States bankruptcy is verified in Senate report. Congress, the first session, summary of emergency power statutes, and then there's the executive orders that took all your wealth. And then you have the Under the Trading with the Enemy Act, so this is where you, we did our Peaceful Inhabitants, Affidavit of Peaceful Inhabitants. I'm taking all this affidavit stuff out after reading what Tammy said and looking up that variant and stuff. It's reversing my whole approach at things. This Suits and Chancery stuff is really, really big time stuff. Um, equity, it's all equity in REM. That's the big boy stuff. And then the Bible is 
trust bank. It's just trust banking. That's what the Bible is about. It's about trust banking. I'm like, we went back to Cain and Abel. And Abraham is the note, liabilities, pat, the pass. I'll go over the Passover with you. But all right, let me get back. Number eight. All right, number seven. In fact, that any transaction discharge that liability is in accordance to the compliance of UCC Article 3 104, Title 4, Section 401, FRA, Title 12, USC, Title 28, Section 1631. 3002 and the foreign article one section 10 of our sovereign immunity act uh, under necessity in the light of the fact that several states are in violation of article one section 10 of the u.s constitution all right you go the fact that all right number nine in fact that any documents transmitted on behalf of the debtor discharge that liability on behalf of the debtor in full accord and is with House Joint Resolution 192, Public Law 7310, UCC 3419, UCC 1-104, and 10-104. All right, keep going down towards the bottom. I'm getting to like the 30s. Okay, so. So say if you paid your mortgage off in Federal Reserve notes, 31, fact that Title 26, Section 165, the United States Codes, subsection G, G, subsection 2, subsection C, this is where worthless securities are defined. So even though you've been sending your hard-earned cash, you haven't paid anything. They're worthless. They just take them, and they still bill you for the interest. All right, Title 31, USC, Section 3526, Settlements of Accounts, Subsection A. The Comptroller General shall settle all accounts of the United States government and supervise the recovery of all debts, finally certify the Comptroller General as do the government. Subsection B, as a decision of the Comptroller General under Section 3529 of this title is conclusive of the Comptroller General when settling the account containing the payment, subsection C, subsection one. The Comptroller General shall settle an account of an accountable official within three years after the date the Comptroller General receives the account. A copy of the certificate of settlement shall be provided to the official. Two, the settlement of the account is conclusive on the Comptroller General after three years after the account is received by the Comptroller General. However, an amount may be charged against the account after a three-year period when the government has made or lost money because the official acted fraudulently or criminally. Three, a three-year period under the subsection is suspended during a war, and we're at war. We've always been at war. This subsection does not prohibit subsection A, recovery of public money, legal or erroneously paid, Recovery from an official or balance due to government under settlement within three year period. Subsection C, an official clearing of the count question items as prescribed by law. Keep going down. Keep going. Keep going. All right, 49, let me see, 46, 47. All right, 47, here you go, it's important. This is what I read in the bill of complaint. This is where they, 47 is where you, they have the capital gains. Now the agreement is already in place via article 31, 38 of the Lieber Code, which works in conjunction with article 55 of the Hague. Occupying army is regarded only as administrator and owner, which will serve. Go on, I'm skipping. Go up. There you go. Use of fruct of all public buildings, agriculture, estates, etc., and must operate them in accordance with the rules of the use of fruct. Article 38 of the Lieber Code is the issuance of receipts. Uh, the spoilated owner, which will serve to uh, indemnify the owner, should. Uh, the owner should the owner all right, that's fucked up in there. The owner should not have fled, and this is where the presumption resides. The live birth certificate is the receipt 
So your birth certificates are safekeeping receipts. They've been taking money out of your birth certificate. I know how to take the funds that they've been taking and how they get paid to you. That's what I'm being walked through. And that's part of your address change. Everything's been going to the state. That's your father. The state is your father. That's how they consider it. Forty-nine UCCs. All right. So go. These statutes define the promissory note, negotiable security instrument, or security to uh, sellable because it's a financial asset. Fifty. Title twenty-six, section one hundred eight e ten a. Income from discharge indebtedness for purpose of this title indebtedness satisfied by issuance of a debt instrument international promissory note. In, uh, subsection A, in general, for purposes of determining income of a debtor from discharge of indebtedness, if a debtor issues a debt instrument in satisfaction of indebtedness, such debtor shall be treated as having satisfied the indebtedness with the amount of money equal to the issue price of the debt instrument. And there, Title 26, USC 6325, release of lien or discharge of property, the bonds or the note accepted. There is a furnished to the secretary and accepted him a bond that is conditioned upon the payment of the amount assessed, together with the interest and respect thereof within the time prescribed by law, including any extension of such time. And that is in accordance with such requirements relating to terms, conditions, and the form of the bond and sureties thereon, as may be specified by such regulations. And then it goes into the call sheets, the balance sheets, and there's your memorandum. And that's all the laws backing up negotiable instruments, securities, fraudulent transfers, uh, tax gains on their assets that you created. Um, it goes over, it has the breach of trust in there, it goes over your special appearance, it goes in your claim, it goes into everything that we have in there goes into the laws to discharging debt, it goes into the laws of recoupment, it goes into the laws of um, shut off, equity, it's all in there. All right, go back to the bill. Anil texts me, he's like, can't make it, he's gonna be in here next class to talk about his process. All right, so that was that. So say that was the interrogating part. They would have to rebut every one of those 52. They can't get past number three. Because number one is just coming in higher, you know, appearing specially. The ones that they, after that, you have to, you know, answer back affidavit. See, I'm that, oh, that read is messing with me. Those affidavits don't mean nada. Shit's just garbage. Um, can do a notice, a claim versus, or a declaration versus an affidavit. There you go, my man. King, there he is. We still got to do your 82. I got some more sauce for you guys, too. I got it already. Did you? It's easy. It's not that hard. Yeah, I just watched the video. All right, cool. Um, so now we have the prayer for relief and the prayer for process. The relief you want is your discharge. You want your restitution. You want them good. I mean, affidavits have to work because I don't think too many people are privy to that kind of wisdom that Tammy's really putting out there. And I, I believe her last name is the pepper bomb, but she's from what I've read, she, it's a great foundation. I'm not, negating affidavits like you know what I mean I'm still gonna try the affidavits with the insurance and I'm still gonna use them um, but the bill of complaint and the memorandum of laws is how you get your equity your restitution this is how you put them in check and your w8 Ben your executor letter your forgiveness letter and your IRS 82 showing you to be the executor puts them in the automatic role of fiduciary trustee and then your UCC1 security agreement, that makes you the lien, hold, lien creditor. And then the security agreement makes you the entitlement holder. Your entitlement rights are UCC Article 8-505 and 508 through 508. So the prayer for relief, wherefore, claimants pray that the district court is mandated pursuant to the supplemental rules of admiralty and the laws of nations, law of uh, 
Justice Supra uh, for an inquiry into all matters here and sworn by the petitioners, claimants, you, last name, first name, middle, which pour out its uh, findings pursuant to libel review. If upon its findings and conclusions pursuant to law and justice, that one, the court notified defendants to return all properties and monies taken from petitioner claimants fiduciaries as was taken from funds deposited in trust during bankruptcy, and if we have a case number or if we have a foreclosure number, it goes there. And like to move all notice of lien, so if the IRS, we can do this for the IRS, if anybody has a lien or levy. Uh, the response, refused notice court, petitioner claims liable review, uh, be filled admiralty process issue and responded libel. That'll be cited to appear and answer allegations of this libel. That said suit will be reviewed in the original, in the alternative, that said, Alleged liens be removed and levies dismissed along with the return of all property petition uh, claimants. In conclusion, we pray for the relief. The court discharge set off and recoups that claim. The recoupment is set off in accordance to New York State Commercial Codes. It would be like New York State, NYS, UCC 3.305 and 3.306, 9 340. Because we are the lien creditors entitled Mahars, we pray for restitution through our entitlement rights, which is UC Article 505 to 508, which makes us the entitlement holder on set security future, also known as the note and the deed of trust. Title 31, USC 3123 and 266325, uh, release of lien or discharge of property. And Title 31 is where it shows that the United States government is obligated to discharge our debts dollar for dollar. All right, now we'll go to, so that's your discharge, recoupment, your set off, restitution. Yes, you always claim everything. I don't know where you get the 20 to 40 million, but you go on fidelity and you put in the case number and the case number will have, Mark knows how to navigate the fidelity. He knows how to look up the QSIPs and get the municipal bonds. And then last class, I gave the phone number to call fidelity. You give them the complaint number or the case number, whichever is nine numbers, and they'll give you the QSIP and the amount that is being traded on. And then the claim, your claim, your recoupment is a 1099A, 1096, 8281, OID, 706, 709, 1041. You might not even need the 1041. I'm trying to do this with the 706 and 709. I got the 709 filled out. I'm filling out the 706 to SS5. I'll show you guys the bank accounts. I'm going down to New York to set up the Fidelity stuff, uh, the Foreign Grantors Trust Bank account. I'll record it. I'll record all my stuff. I have my trust pack out. I'm just waiting for it to get to the Missouri boys. I don't know why they're not giving it to them. But I'm going to do a mock, <clears throat> a mock treasury package for you guys. I'm going to send one to Raul Maldonado. I never sent one to Puerto Rico. I sent one to Jacob Blue. And... I got my green card back and then I've just been helping and growing my trust and growing with you guys. And uh, everybody else has gotten their stuff back very quickly except Doc. <laughs> uh, it could take up to 90 days for you guys bonds to cure. You guys know that. But I'll do the mock one. I got the stuff notarized now. I'm taking pictures. I'm just waiting for the bonds to be sent back to me. I'll put it together. And that's good to go. I got the pictures of my traffic court. We'll go over my executor letter right now after this. And then uh, I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing in court. And then I'm going to go over the foreclosure and how we're going to wrap it up. And then that's the only thing after this, we have to wait for the people that I'm helping and just have to go through the processes for it. I have a court date on September 28th for a foreclosure that I'm speaking for Mr. Delgado. And I'm excited about that one because I'm, man, listen, when Connie was like, uh, your honor, I authorize, that's not the declaration I want, I'll tell you, but she was like, your honor, I authorize uh, Attorney General Polinsky to speak on my behalf. And the judge was like, okay. And I was like, oh man, Mike check, one, two, one, two, is this Mike on? <laughs> and I started, I started spilling, I, you know I mean, I started spilling, da, 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 da. And he was like, Mr. Like, Mr. Polinsky, he's like, all I need from you is the, the where you, what you're appealing, where, how did the USDAA um, mishandle your, or mishandle your clients? Um, they miss, they did miss, I forget what he said, miss service or didn't do, I forget what he said. Real easy stuff. 
So we, all we had to do is just prepare what we had. Um, our, we did our UCC1s, we did our 1099s, we did our OID, we did our A281. And then and I have the bill of complaint and I'll do this memorandum of law. And then I have a letter from Gene that shows where they don't apply the liability side. Um, it's in my commercial notes. I can pull it up after. We went over it. Um, not right now. Go to this. Go to go to the executive letter with the case numbers you had on there that we were working on. So I got this book. It's called The Admiralty and Maritime in uh, the United States. Here, I'm going to open this up again. All right, I just messed everything up. Hold on. All right. This is a soft stuff book. I'm going to go into. All right, see, I, boom, this is how God works. All right, so I just open up to a quick page, page 449, and it goes into bankruptcy. Let me uh, read what it says for the bankruptcy. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 4 of the Constitution provides, Congress shall have the power to establish blah, 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 uniform laws, bankruptcies throughout the United States. Title 28, USC, Section 1334, Subsection 8, grants federal district courts exclusive jurisdiction over bankruptcy proceedings. That jurisdiction is handled and specialized way provided in various sections of Titles 11 and Titles of, and Title 28. Title 11 is your bankruptcy; it's your reorganization. Bankruptcy judges are not Article 3 judges; they are appointed by courts of appeals for 14-year terms. That's under Title 28 U.S.C. Section 152. They are paid 92% of the district judge's salary. Title 28 U.S.C. Section 153. Their decisions are appealable to the district courts, Title 28 U.S.C. 158. Before the bankruptcy code was amended in 1984, there was much more, doubt, uh, much more doubt and conflict about many years or many ways in which law of maritime liens uh, can collide with bankruptcy law. But several formerly hotly debated matters are now being taken as clear. Bank, all right, then it gets into bankruptcy. Okay, let me pull up this sovereign stuff. And this is what you're protected, and this is how you go after um, your debt collectors, anybody coming against you. Just let me read these laws real quick. And uh, all right. So, page 493, chapter 11, sovereign immunities. And I'm about to read the middle paragraph. It says. Subsequently, Congress enacted a number of general statutes waiving various aspects of federal, go of federal government immunity. The presently important statutes are the 1887 Tucker Act, Title 28 U.S.C. Section 1346, Subsection A, Subsection 2, and 1491, Subsection A, Subsection 1. And so what James talks about the 1920 Suits and Admiralty Act, which is codified in Title 46 USC, Section 30901 through 18. So 30901 to 30918. Then you got the Public Vessels Act of 1925, codified in Title 46 USC, Section 31101 to 31113. Then you have the Federal Tort Claims Act, Title 28, USC, Section 1346, Subsection B, 1400B, Subsection B. 2401, Subsection B, 2402, 2412, 2671 through 2680. And the 1978 Contract Disputes Act, which is codified Title 41, USC, 601 through 603. Those are important, and that's what protects you. That's how you go after them in, in admiralty, in suits of admiralty federal tort claims, and you guys are foreign sovereigns. All right, so this is the executor letter for court. And I'm going to add to it. So now for my executor letter, I'm going to add in my birth certificates, numbers, and then my first and middle name. So 
where I'm just going to go over this. It's not, I'm not adding a lot. You'll see it when I'm done. I'm not going to do it now. It takes time. So this is to the office, state court, uh, administrator, you put the judge. It's from the executor office of the Peter Joseph Polinsky estate. You're the live man. That's all fiction in there. That's all dead. You're coming in saying, hey, yo, what's good with my guy right here? He got in trouble or something? He owes something? I'm responsible for him. What do I got to do? What do I got to do to settle that? Is there something I owe? Cool, I'll pay that. Where do I sign? There I go again. I gotta turn this shit off. I keep looking at myself. All right. Go down. Regarding unauthorized administration. So now we're getting right off the bat. Uh, uh, state embezzlement. And again, anything that comes in the mail, bills, fucking summons, judgments. Uh, warrants. If you get pulled over, first and middle name. I'm Peter Joseph. I just read this shit. So we put the case numbers in. We got the judge and the authority of the Utica uh, Superior Court. Uh, it's not right. In close, you will find your abandoned paper, which appears erroneous, alleged that da 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 Central Division, uh, who is an unwarranted acts, fraudulently claim authority from the executive office to administrate for Peter Joseph Polinsky estate. That false claim is hereby adjourned. You will fort with uh, return and transmit the specific written delegation of authority. They need a letters of mark. They need an oath, they need, uh, fuck, a lot more than they need than they're just sitting around with, I'll tell you that. It's all fear in there. You given, we see the people give these courts so much power, it's ridiculous. When I'm done doing what I'm doing, they're all gonna be shut down. I don't see how they can operate once the word gets out, and once the templates are out, like, what are they gonna do? They're going to have to regroup. That's what's going to happen. The authorization to administrate my estate has been warranted, together accompanied by a certified copy of your oath and swearing as a public servant. A detailed list of all your bonds, sureties, and indemnification, and insurance. And a full counting relating to the way to your any related actors personal or professional involvement as referenced above through the warranted presentation of the irrigated intrusion upon my estate, trespassing, fall the fuck back. Now the importance of court is making it public record. When you get a certified transcript, that's not public record. When you admit, A-D-M-I-T, when you admit your evidence into court, that's public record. Admit it, when you admit your evidence, that makes it public record. And I believe Title 18 is what she was talking about, 1343 is they can't alter that, they can't touch it, they can't change it. So once you go to your county registrar, you record your executor letter and your state pet or your forgiveness documents, and these, be, and these are on record, they can't do nothing about it. So when I'm, telling you, when I'm telling you that everything you send out is a public notice, there's only a few things you record. The executor letter is one thing you record. Your, the, um, the forgiveness document I'm recording. Your UCC1 you're recording, and your security agreement. But your security agreement is just your first and last page. TJ? Yep. All right, sorry, I had to go take a nap. When, when can you record your executive letter? What do you mean, when? Do you send it out to the governor first and then record it after? No, I recorded it. I'm, I'm, I'm going down tomorrow and recording it 
in the county, and then I'm going to make my notices to the governor and everybody once I record all my stuff. It's going to be like three hundred dollars. Just to record the letter. No, not, I mean, not the, I mean, I have a bunch of stuff that I want to record, like the security agreement. I want to record uh, my reservation of rights now. I want to record this executive letter. I want to record my UCC1 for my 82 and my uh, social. And uh, that's it. That's the only thing that needs to be recorded. And then the two documents that were always, the four documents that you're always going to keep on you, UCC1, security agreement, this executive letter, and the, forgiveness document those documents always stay on you and again they ever ask you who you are first to middle and then when we're going to be setting up our our monthly bill i'm calling verizon tomorrow i'm gonna try and set up a business account and i'll see what i can do for you i'll see you know what i mean we'll get the ball rolling you know what i mean i know everybody's it's about to be christmas time i'll do everything that i can to make sure you guys have some christmas spending money or one thing that I was thinking of is creating a trust or, an or, or a, a nonprofit organization for this group and just doing special deposits and then paying out the group. Why can't we do it? You can see what I'm saying? If we just put all of our brains together, we can, it'll take us a week to put it together. I got all the templates and paperwork. We'll close the group. We'll put a trust and an organization together. It's the same thing that the Crown did, the Vatican did. It's just claims. So I'm game. If ain't nobody See? else game, I'm fucking game. I will, we'll, I'll, I'll put something together. I'll, you know what I mean? And then we'll put our brains together and we can change the world that way. So again, govern yourself accordingly. I'm going to add in a couple things here. I want to add in the state embezzlement code. I want to, uh, uh, I want to add in the piracy statutes. Yeah. The state embezzlement and just say the piracy statutes. That's the only thing I want to add. And then does, the, the, does the executive letter go in the in the court case itself after you record it on the public record? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, well you need to drop that dime over here then. Let me go shut this shit down. Yep, I will. Tomorrow we're gonna put your pack together, record it, take pictures of it. That's gonna be the so everybody can see how the pack goes together. And then that's done. Okay, well if once, we're our, once our paperwork goes out, well, it's just gonna shut everything down. Okay, if we're, if we're, if we're going to do that tomorrow. Oh, whatever's fine. a good day for you. Yeah, well, I'm going back to bed then because I just took these herbs. Nah, good shit. Yeah, oh, the ones that I told you about, and that nice. shit's making me sleepy as shit. Cool. So cool. I'm out. Right. I'll call you guys tomorrow. I'll wait for okay. you to call me. Laurel, I'll wait for your call or whoever, whether you see or PJ calling. Okay. All right, cool. thanks, guys. Jay, talk to you later. Night, Jay. Good night, right. Jay. Have a good night, man. Good night, Jay. Good night. All right. Then, uh, so you end it, executor office. You're the chief executor officer. Lean creditor, entitlement holder, you're the boss. And then when you record it and you make that declaration, there's nothing they can, sue, they can say to rebut it. The only thing that they can do is try to work around it by changing like little letters in your name and see if you didn't catch it and see if they can get you to answer to that fiction. All this is is showing you that you're alive and because you've shown that you're alive, you reap benefits and privileges and you're a king. So you know what the king's court is? The king's court is a 12 mile radius around your temple. When we started talking about the house, your temple is the house. That's when I tell people, you're the, you're the temple built without hammer and nail. This is what Jesus was talking about when he went into the temples and he, and he took all the money out and because that's not the house. They perverted the house. The house is your body where you reside and your body is the land. So when they were coming over here and they were talking about uh, discovering the new lands, it's in this read that Tammy talks about. The new land is your body. <laughs> not the United States, not the land mass. The new land that they were discovering was your temple, the God's temple, the house built without hammering them. So once you show that you're alive, all that fiction stuff, it's all dead. When you show up to court, you're representing a fiction that's dead. I don't, I haven't gone to court. 
I had to take I haven't, I haven't been to court. I went to Australia and then I didn't go to court. I was going to test it out. I want to see what my status was. I was like, they're either going to arrest me at the airport for a warrant or my status has some meaning to it. I went through the diplomatic links. It was one of the happiest days of my life when I went to Australia. It was crazy. All of a sudden, the stewardess came up to me and she handed me this pass and said, uh, go through the diplomatic way. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I, haven't looked, I haven't looked back. The only thing I've been learning is trust banking. So when you have your trust set up, you send it to Raul Maldonado, the only thing you have to study is trust banking. I'm going to do the, I'll do the background UCC videos. I'll give you the background of how to create the negotiable instrument. I'll give you all them laws and why they work and how to use them and how, and how these maritime liens work. Because they didn't, they, they didn't send any of my stuff back. So they kept it. And now there's liens on it and registered. So now I can track it. They can't take it. The, 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 it, it's, it, the, creating your own money is not the hard part. Getting them to recognize it and accept it is the hard part. Creating your own checks is easy. I'll go over it right now. Right. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. The, the, the part that keeps tripping me up is what do we do about the driver's licenses? Throw them shits in the trash. <laughs> I've gotten, I haven't, I've been in more trouble when I had a driver's license than I had. When I, when I get pulled over, I just hand my passport. So right now I have a huge lawsuit that I can do against the DMV for trying to contract with me because I have no contract with the DMV. Once my license expired, it's expired, I didn't renew it. So I had no contract with the DMV. I've just been handed in my passport. But now with your name, with the DS Form 82, you're just going to be handing them your passport. Your vehicle will be, will be private. If you get pulled over, first of all, if you get pulled over without a warrant, you're going to charge the, the state 50 racks, 50,000. You'll see mine. Um, with the driver's license, if you have one, this is what you do. Go buy an international stamp on the back of it, uh, put your thumbprint over it, sign it in gold, and then hand the cop that one and see what he does. So the, the reason I'm asking is because both my wife and I have uh, direct, uh, direct sales businesses. So right. So if you have, if you're driving a truck and you're being paid to deliver goods, you have to have a license for that. Well, that's where the licensing comes in. But that now, now that's what's that's why I said it gets me tripped up because it says if you're driving a vehicle, that could be a car or a truck. Um, in our case, we're not driving a big old truck; we're just driving our, our what would be considered right. our personal vehicles, uh, and and, and uh, transporting product from home to the location where we're actually going to be doing the sales. Okay, I'll clear it up. I'll clear that up real quick for two minutes. Okay, so anything if you have your cars registered with the uh, with the state, uh, the state has jurisdiction over it. It does. If you want to take your your business completely private, take your trucks and cars completely private. Don't have a private business and then have your trucks and your cars uh, registered publicly. Now you're co-mingling. That's what people do. They co-mingle. Private and public can't do it. It's got to be one or the other, and that's where most people are in their process. They have their they have one foot in the private, one foot in the public. Like they have their trust set up, but all their cars are still registered with the state, with the king. You have to go through the Department of State to get your foreign plates. Once you're foreign to the corporation, it said they pull you over. That's like a McDonald's car pulling you over. You're not part of that corporation no more. You're not a U.S. citizen. You're an American citizen, American national. There's U.S. citizens and there are there's yeah there's U.S. citizens and there's federal citizens. It's only two. That's it. Citizenship's not bad. It's just how you operate in the game. That's all. It's all operation and commerce. You're not commerce. You're the living man that created the commerce. So you operate outside of it. That shit's beneath you. Way beneath you. You're all creators. John ten thirty four. Keep going down. All right, go down. What else? It repeats the same letter, so. Oh, it's the second one, All right? Okay. All right, so that's just the beginning of my executive letter. I'm just going to add the titles in for the estate embezzlement and piracy statutes. And then I'm going to attach my fee schedule. That's it. That's all I'm going to do.
All right, go to what I say I was going to, what else did I say after I was going to do it there? There's an executive executor letter here that you noted. Yeah, this was my first one. This would be like my, like my first read of uh, David Clarence. Yeah. Um, it's an, it's, it was all right. It's just a template. I you can get X out of that. Okay. That's nothing. Um, all right, we did the executor letter. With the, they know the 82s. We went over the WA Benz. All right, we did the 1099. Okay, go to, uh, we'll go, I'll show you. Uh, here, let me send Laurel the picture of my OID. Well, I'll show you the end part of my secure transaction, and I'll get into creation of how to create your own money. And then you can go start. I'll go into the secure transaction. Um, Laurel, sending it now to, oh, should I just send it to your email? Yeah, is that the one you sent me the other day in a text? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just pull that up. Okay, one second. Please, 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 please. Right here. No, no, not those. Oh, yeah, you saved them, right? I save all of them. I know. We can go on the UCC and look it up, though. Mm -hmm. All right, so this was the last part of my secured transaction, all right? And so now you can see my verbiage, my OIDs. So I don't want to hear anybody say. I never feel all the, for anybody. What, you want, what, the transcripts, the 45060 for the transcripts? I'll show you how to fill that out. You can just call me, I'll walk you through it. Um. So this is what I believe to be my last part of my secure transaction. Since I sent them the OID letters, um, I've, I closed the circuit. Um, you guys seen my negative checks, the negative 1041V and the 1099As. That's the only thing that's missing out of here. So to the left is the 1096 uh, showing the amounts. There's two of them there, but the first one is for the 291,000 for the Bentley. Um, and then I check off the OID and I just put lien creditor and entitlement holder for titles. I keep it simple these days. Not right now. Get a hand cram right now on my titles. <laughs> then all right, so there's your OID. So it's it's the pair is the the estate. Okay. Uh, my identification number because I filled out the 966. It's dissolved and liquidated. Okay. So now I'm using my 82 number. My 82 is is still attached to my my social and then their number is that's their tin number and then up top it's just the fair it's the fair market value and the amount of the bill of sale okay so your bill the bill of sale that they give you is what pays for everything you just have to balance the books report the transaction and go from there it's just a matter of time now for me i pray you know what i mean once i get the rv i'm out I'll see you guys later. Come down to your city. We'll put a group together and we'll start changing the world. Because there's nothing they can say after this. We have the proof. We have the judgments. We have the discharges. We, what don't we have here in this group? Like I told people, the only thing I haven't done was purchase something creating my own money. That's the only thing I haven't figured out. Courts figured out. Foreclosures are figured out. Offsets are figured out. Secure transactions is the last frontier for me. And then, I mean, I guess just to help the world out, I'm going to read Suits and Chancery and, uh, you know, equity jurisprudence and then just become a master in that because that's it's trust banking and equity. That's what's at the top here. I don't see anything more higher than trust banking, securities, and equity. Cause that's the only thing that I've been dealing with in this last, you know, six months is trust banking securities and, uh, equity. All right. <clears throat> so the account number on the bottom is your registered mail number. And that's what we, we did that on the 1099 a as well. So we're staying consistent. We're staying, linear 
There's my 8281. See, I don't have any QCIP on that. Okay, so everybody's worrying about putting QCIPs on there. If it's not a brokerage transaction, there's no broker there, you don't need the QCIPs. People don't even, people talk about QCIPs, don't know how to use them, but, but why not? What do you, you know what I mean? I laugh because when they hear somebody talking about one. So, again, 8281 is my state, my suite number, suite's the international. Uh, my 82 number is my identification number. Uh, ask for signs. If I don't know it, I put not, I, it's not available. I don't know it. You know what I mean? I'm the beneficiary. You guys figure this shit out and all this accounting and accrual shit. I filled it out to the best of my abilities. Helps you out. I'm filling the rest. I don't have this information in front of me or, you know, ready available to me. Go find it. That's your job. If you don't want to be a public servant, don't be a public servant, homie. Go be a king. So this is where it asks for a description of the the instrument here. And it go, I just, you know, it's my check, my personal check, 1002. Paid to the order of the United States Treasury. Now there's two treasuries, Department of Treasury, United States Treasury. United States Treasury is your de George uh, Treasury. You don't want to send it to the Department of So we put the value, wrote it out, put the register mail number on there, negative 1041V. Um, and we tell them that this is assigned and recorded, and we went over this in last class, in accordance to Title 46, 31321. And we put ag liens, when I get to the UCCs, we put ag liens on them to make them perform. And then there's my international stamp. I didn't put, my, this is not the seal, this is just the stamp my thumbprint. Now the seal would just be my thumbprint halfway on the stamp and halfway off it. That's it. And then I signed Peter Joseph Plinsky estate. That's my 82 number on top and a date on the bottom. And that's it. Hold that. That's your seal. Hold that. Who's got a, who's, who's going to rebut it? Another king? Yeah. Go down a little bit. So now we'll get into the UCCs. So there's your 8281 that accompanied the OID in accordance to IRS publications 1212. So, all right, the one on the left is the UCC3, so I'm gonna start with the one on the right. Uh, you got the verbiage to pull up for the collateral section, bro? Up top, easy, boom. All cap name, that's my sweet, or my, it's, it's Peter Joseph Plinsky Estate. My 82 numbers in there for the organization you know, private is the estate. The registry checks for the treasury or for the 8280? Yeah, I think both of them are fine. All right, verbiage. No, that was the first one I sent the fee. Okay, so this is the collateral on the UCCs. The UCC one is the first one. Oh no, this is both of them in the, this is the collateral section. This is our UCC one that we recorded on, placed the agony. This is, so you guys can't read it. So, all right, exit out of that. That's the verbiage. You guys can have it. That's in that middle section right there on the UCCs for both of them. So one on the right, uh, then it says additional secured parties. This is where I put Steve Mnuchin. Yeah, because that's not the debtor section. That's the it's an additional secure party. It's usually below this, you know what I mean? So that's the additional secure party. Da 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 da. da. Yeah. Yep. Steve Mnuchin signed my last one. He he took the checks in, and uh, the only thing, the only negotiable instrument I got sent back is because I have to expatriate is the nine million. That was I sent that to Social Security Administration Commissioner. But they want me to go down there and open up my account. I'll redo it. And then you claim it on the 706, 709, 1041, Schedule K-1. You donate, you gift them, and then you take it back. Because you get 100% deductible on gifts. All right, so there's, and then here's the assignment over here on the left. 
And again, this is all on uh, New York Secure. Go to that. See if it's it's cleaner on there. Go to the New York Secure Party lookup. And then uh, look up what did Don put up on the board. I remember the first time I filed my UCC1 and that shit popped up, fam. I felt like a king that day. I was like, yo. Door didn't get kicked in. I was like, all right, we on the path, kid. Uh, no, New York Secured Party Lookup. Yeah. Last name? Not in the business name. I checked that. It's got to be in one of these. Who's that? Nope. That was last year. That's when I tried to redo something. That I didn't have to. Nope. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the ones at the bottom of the <coughs> ones I just filed. There's the finite, <coughs> yep, right there. See those pop up. See if they redacted anything on there. I didn't have anything on there. Oh, they, they, why are they redacting the EIN? <coughs> they said the EINs could be on there, I don't get it. <coughs> All right, excuse me. So there you go. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> we uh, the an additional debtor is the man, is the company that you're doing business with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Secure parties. Your last name, first name, middle. Now you can see the collateral section a little bit better there. We we'll check off Aglin, Baylor, Bailey, because you're <coughs> you're bailing them out. Think about the courts and how pagan it is, and bail, right? You paying them bail. Say if your kid got caught up and you had to go bail him out, you're paying bail. Ball, b a l b a a l. That's the devil. Then his man, his, his, where the devil goes is Marduk, M-A-R-D-U-K. It all, that all goes back to Rome. All right, go to the assignment. All right, then this, all right, so. <coughs> <coughs> Additional death stars, we added, uh, the Alpen Haw ski shop. Now we put the um, additional secure parties. It's just the United States Treasury. I didn't list uh, Steve. Uh, go down. <coughs> Excuse me. That is a trust. Additional collateral description. You don't need. All right, pull up the other one. And there you go. There's your. That's your. Uh, that's how you register record your negotiable instruments. And now here's the assignment. All right, so there's my UCC one from the last one I just showed you guys. Number four, we click the assignment. And then we go down to seven. This is, we're sending it to Mnuchin. This is added information. We're assigning it to Steve Mnuchin, 1500 Washington, DC. Come down here in the collateral, click assign. Last name, first name, middle is assigning set securities to the governor of the United States Treasury, Steve Mnuchin, check number 1001, pay the order of the United States, uh, United States Treasury and the value of, spell it out, da da da. 
And so this is where I, the at the end right here, it's not USC 31321, which is when we registered them, that was the code that we went by to register them. <clears throat> the assignment and the discharge comes from this. So now I'm telling them, like, homeboy, you guys hold all the gold. You are obligated under Title 18 USC Section 8 to discharge all my debts, and that's in accordance to Title 31 USC 3123. Now, how about it? And then name is secure party, last name, first name, middle. I use my I use the all cash because it's all a fiction. And that's where your executor comes in and shows you that the live person is running this fiction. Because they're not go that's what that's when they say it's just business, that's what it, they're not going after you. They don't give a fuck about you. They just want that trust money. But people take this shit way too personally. Smarten up, stand on your square. They can't do shit about it. Go on with your life. Do what you want to do. Live through love and light. What more can they do? It's all mental. They have a mental thing over you. Or a mental, you know what I mean? It's all mental. Government. It's over your mind. Don't let them come into your temple. You you see how they, man, these motherfuckers do what they want. But if you act like a slave and you want health care, you want welfare, you want this, pay, fam, they're going to give you the bare minimums. Think about it, if you was a king and you had subjects and you want to take care of them. <clears throat> Are you going to give them the best shit possible? If you was a good king, probably, but nah, man, if you're not going to take care of yourself and you want other people to take care of you, here, have this bullshit. That's why you get sent to chemotherapy instead of getting uh, CBD oils or SCAC tea. You want to act like a cow, then get treated like one. You want to act like a king, you'll be treated as one. On how you conduct yourself. That's what the courts are there for. They're there to attack you morally, spiritually, and mentally. <clears throat> Think about child support or child custody, and they take your kids and they tell you you're not a good father. There's your morals. How they're telling you you're not a good father. Now they're attacking you morally. Now your kids are being taken away. And now you got to pay. Now they're attacking you spiritually. And now you're stressed out. <clears throat> you have no money. You don't see your kids. And there goes your mental anguish. That's all the courts are there for. They just, they're there to check to see who the fuck you are. <clears throat> Let that shit be known. Who the fuck you are. King Kong and this mother. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Moving on. Don't get me hyped. Keep going down. That That's should be it. the end of it, right? That's it. All right. So you've seen the registration. You've seen... The assignment. Now you just have to wait for the. I have to wait for the time. I have to let the time pass by. I can't rush them. I can't do nothing. It's my first one. If they let my foot in the door, what, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get in the kingdom of heaven. This is what I'm trying to enter. That's why they make it so hard at the end. You're about to enter in heaven, the kingdom. <clears throat> You're about to leave the land of the dead where the debtors are. That's why you, when you see these rich people or king, they don't hang out with debt tours. It's not they don't hang out with poor people. It's this, your mentality and your vibration. They just don't, you, there's nothing to talk about. These motherfuckers are talking about the Roman circus, and these motherfuckers are talking about how they're going to manipulate an economy. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? It's all about what conversation you get into. I don't waste my time. If it ain't about changing the world, don't waste my time. I'm not getting involved. When I used to sell drugs, if it's not about making a hundred thousand, don't talk. It's all what you conversate yourself in. Only again, king, only kings understand each other. Only I'm only in king conversations. If you don't understand me, I can't speak to you then. I only speak to kings and queens. That's it. Conduct yourself that way. 
<clears throat> well, who's going to tell you not that you're not a king or queen? Tell them to come see me in the octagon. We'll see who comes out. Because they tried, they tried, listen, they, are, they tried to enslave you. They tried to enslave you. They tried the wars. You can't kill a free beating heart. You just can't do it. You can't beat them. So they killed you with paperwork. <clears throat> Bombarded you with paperwork and you signed your life away because nobody knows what the fuck they're doing and they just follow sheep. Public schools, prison. <clears throat> Hospitals or state wars, prisons. Tell me the difference between them. You guys are all militant. Think about people that have the, uh, that go to jobs. You're just paid the same rate as military people. <clears throat> all right, what do you? All right, quest. What do you guys want me to go over? Who's having like blockages on uh, administrative procedures? You, I mean, I'll go into the laws backing up the bill of exchange. We'll get into secure transactions if you want. No, can you just go over, this is Mary, can you just go over the last steps in regards to, okay, so I've got the default and then going to go to get the um, Secretary of State as far as the county okay. seal and the Secretary of State. So now I've got my judgment. So I'm going to go and do like what you were just showing, the UCCs? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I want to go ahead and then send the registered mail similar to treasury no okay so look okay you have your default right yes go to secretary of state you get a certificate of default then you take that certificate of default while you're there you put that on the ucc1 and all you say in the collateral section is i have the vested interest in this default certified by the secretary of state da, 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 da. call up fidelity or your broker Tell them you have a security that needs to be lodged. Then they hypothecate it, monetize it. Yeah, that's where I'm like, no, I don't have a fidelity broker and all that. All I wanted to look to do at this point, because basically the hardball as now I've got the NOI as the juxtaposition in terms of the evidence of default. So I just want to go ahead and do the shutdown on coming at it. Now they're trying to ramp up with a law firm and just have the default in as the $10 million security interest. Right. So at that point, that's where I'm like, it could just be a simple replevin on the fact that they failed to give me the OID. And I'm like, all right, well, do I just do like a district claim to get the audit that way? Well, they, they're not going to file the OIDs. This is why No, correct. Like that's correct. That's, that's what basically I'm recognizing is they're not going to zero the books. And so I'm going, all right, well, do I follow what you just did at the first part of the class, that whole summary in terms right, so of what are, what, what, what What are you trying to take care of? What's, I don't, what's all I want is the removal of the deed of trust that was done in error. That's it. Just, just remove the redemption, basically, in terms of that they've, they've given me the acceptance of the tender. It was fascinating. But they put it in suspension. So they took my money order 1040V and gave me a response back saying, you've, um, what is it? We've received tender in excess of your installment agreement. So we put it in suspension. Right. So I got the correspondence that agreed, yep, this is good but they failed to zero the account and remove the lien. So I sent them a settlement agreement that says you're uh, going to go ahead and do the removal from the records. Right. And then that was where they effectively started this um, default action with the law firm. So I'm like, all right, well, you guys are in default, did that. Now it's a matter of, honestly, I'd be happy with a phone call from some vice president. Oh, so sorry for my mistake. We'll remove the records. They've already got the payments. I've sent the deed of trust, the promissory note, all that. All that's already been paid for. So now it's just the variant off the name form service contract that they're trying to lay claim. Who's trying to claim? Oh, so I should have. I should have been more clear. The parties. Anyhow, uh, Soteris is the one that has the service contract. They're doing the general language, saying, of course, the creditors, Fannie Mae. I've already got it that it's JP Morgan that was evidence as far as taking the payment. So, you know, that's not the problem in, in the elements of the um, Fannie Mae. It's like, I'm the national. 
the point is is that the deed <laughs> of trust was done in error. Right. And so about, now it needs to be doing it. Right. So it's a record expungement. So I'm just trying to figure out for the enforcement so I don't get some kind of, of circuit court problem where some lawyer is going to kind of claim to work for me that they're just collecting against this John Doe who took a loan from the John Henry Doe estate. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm John. So what are you coming for me for? Well, see, they're not the real party of interest. Correct. I am. And so now I'm trying to get the enforcement. So that's the only thing I don't. So I don't understand where the, the going to fidelity fits in. I got the $10 million lien. All right, now where do I look to lodge that as the counterclaim? You have to open up your brokerage account and a cash management account. Then you call the broker and tell them you have a security that needs to be lodged. They lodge it, hypothecate it, monetize it, and you get your dividend payout. That's what you're doing with the default. Now to stop them from coming after you, you, yeah. tell, them, you tell them you send them a notice to intend to sue. Okay. And you say that you're going to go into federal district court for a state, right. et cetera, et cetera. And then they're done. It's done. Sign the executrix letter. That's what it seemed. Okay. It seemed you know it was maybe saying? more along. Yeah. It seemed like it might've been more along the executor letter. I was like, you debt collectors need to fall the fuck back before I mm -hmm. take everything you own. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> one of my tomorrow my blaze called me to go over a counter deed and record counter deeds. So I'll see how that goes and I'll see what he has put together. I've seen them, but I don't mm, It's not so much record counter deed. I had as far as, well, a lawyer who was saying all he did was call up and get the redemption certificate after they had the acceptance of the tender. Who, had the, it, who had the acceptance? You went into the county? Uh, no, it, it was just it calling court. up. It was just calling up the servicer um, it was a Wells Fargo, and they, since they had the uh, acceptance of tender, that they just called the servicer and said, hey, I just want the redemption certificate applied. So I don't know. It might just be a simple phone call that I haven't looked to go ahead and call as the attorney in fact kind of hat. Right. Um, so it was just a matter of now seeing, okay, well, what I do with this default in terms of lodging effectively, like you said, that security interest. Because right. because I agree with you, right? If they owe me a hundred, or excuse me, if I owe, meaning that the John Doe owes a hundred, well, who the hell cares? They owe the John Henry Doe estate ten million. Right. So fine, go the heck away, and you know now you only owe me nine million nine hundred and nine hundred thousand right. or whatever. Right. So that's where you go to the Secretary of State and get okay. a certificate of default, and you put the ag lien on the default, and then that's what makes it sellable. That's why you put liens on them, maritime mm -hmm, liens. Mm -hmm, that makes sense. That's how they become negotiable and able to be sold in Admiralty Maritime. All right, potential stupid question. So that quote unquote counteract the Secretary of State, because usually I just get a pos seals or authenticated seals. That counter dude is going to know what a certificate of default is when I give him my presentment? Yes. All right. Secretary of State office, they better. Yeah, well. <laughs> They know what they know what's going. They know it. I guess I'm over See, here. This is what these lawyers. They sometimes I need to get up into like charities and corporations. I mean, you know, it's like yeah, it's like <laughs> you gotta know which door to open. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, of course, as it always, it starts out at a darn security officer and a counter. Yeah, you always have to have the counterclaim. That's federal. Right. Law. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's mandatory. Okay, I just didn't know if it was just a matter of get it. Um, a pause yeah, see, field. Yeah, once you yeah, once you've defaulted them, anybody that comes after you, you just send that executrix letter back and then simply say, Hey, we'll go into federal district court. Nobody wants to go there. Well, right, because then that's effectively as far as where they're having to evidence the basis of the claim. The executor letter, do you already have that posted? Me? Uh yeah, I critiqued mine a little bit. I'll send it over and it'll be posted. Okay, mm -hmm. that would be that would be appreciated. Yeah, I don't I mind have, customizing. Listen, I, have, I have two of them. Well, really three. There's a living will one. I have one that's a, de a declaration of executor, and then I have an executor letter for court that just has the, like we just went over with the case numbers and stuff. I just got that one. Right, right. This one doesn't have a case. Obviously, it's more of a cease and desist. Right. Like what? Like what the heck do you think you're doing? That's my man, kind of thing. Exactly. All right. Absolutely. All right, and then, yeah, please, when you are at that point of 
hypothecating and monetizing off. I got that in regards to the indemnity bond and no one had to do the promissory notes. I agree with you. It's the getting the acceptance as to, you know, doing the discount part on the face value. And then they can Q-sip it and monetize it and everything else from there. Right. But it's Absolutely. been finding that broker. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's fidelity. shopping, shopping on the suitor side is actually turning <laughs> out to be a little harder. I know. That's why I was instructed to open up Fidelity, Fidelity okay. like the brokers of everybody. Um, they've been working with everybody. I've had a few students call in to help them out. They got them the QCIFs. So uh, like I said, Mark knows how to look up the municipal bonds on the website. Uh, maybe next class, if he has time, we can go over that. Yeah, well, that's why we were all like, okay, you know, where can we look to jump in to get on the same path? Like, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I need to make sure I'm on the right path. Right, right, absolutely. Just tired of stuff, too. You're there. All right. Thanks for the You're time. There. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Hey, PJ. My name is David. I'm uh, in Orlando, Florida. What's up, Dave? How you doing? All right. I'm sort of in the same situation here because I got my mortgage company in default for uh, two payments I sent them, and they never returned them or never said anything. Okay, what kind of payments? How were they? What, what, what payments did you send well, them? One was A for V, and the other one was uh, <clears throat> paid to the order of. Except if her value number, they're, they don't work anymore because they restructured something in the IRS. So that's why I pulled up the negative accounting. That's how you balance your books. That's your offset. You got to send them the negative check and the negative 1041V. Two negatives make the positive. The if the some I've seen some of the accepted for values work and turning things into money orders, but I think it's all about finding the right agent getting that, and it's just lucky. And sometimes they let things like that go through to trap you. But well, they kept so. Yeah, they're gonna keep them. They're not gonna send it back to you because for one, you didn't put them on a UCC one to put a lien on them, and then two, you didn't assign it. <clears throat> so if you didn't register it through registered mail, register it on a UCC one, or then assign it on a UCC three, they just take these things and make money on them. Then they, you know, because they're not registered, they're not. It's not proper, so that's why they take them. They're they're not disagreeing with you, but they're not adjusting the account and the performance bond and the ag lien is what makes them do this. Um, well, they didn't, they didn't rebut anything, so they're not going to. They're never going to rebut. They're always going to be in agreement, and their silence is the acceptance. That's why in the private administrator procedure, they're never going to rebut you, and you just go through the default. The default is your last step, and then if you want to get your restitution, your set-offs, the discharge, that's when you take them into federal district court. That's where you get your set-offs, because the courts are the banks, and the judge will make the, the judgment and appropriate transfers in court to do your set-offs. You bring in your evidence. You admit the evidence and you say, hey, here, I made, I sent this to them. Here's the registered mail number on this date. Here's the notary log book. Here's the certificate of mailing. Here's the certificate of service. They haven't adjusted the books. Now they're in breach of trust due to non-performance. Now we can sue them. So if you have them in default, awesome. Go to the Secretary of State. Get your certificate of default. Put that on. I'll, 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 send, I'll help you do the UCC one. You guys can call me if you're there or whatever. I'll help you do the verbiage. And then you open up your brokerage account at Fidelity. Call the broker. Tell them you want it lodged. You have a security that needs to be lodged. Then take my bill of complaint and memorandum of law. Contact your federal district court. You need a cover letter. Uh, open up a miscellaneous file and take them in the federal court. And that's what you can start putting liens, levies on their land, their bank accounts. You could take their house. <clears throat> well, I put everything in the CEO's name. The CEO has nothing to do with anything. The treasury pays your bills. They don't pay your bills. When I, start, when I first started doing the A for Vs and stuff, I did the same thing. I sent it to the CFO. I sent, you know what I mean, a 1099 aid stuff. I sent it to the CFO. Nothing ever happened. It's because right, it's because the way that, that we're setting up our accounts. I'm saying the notary presentment is all in the CEO's name. Oh, that's oh, that's that's good. Okay, so you have the CEO in default. That's perfect. Now you can bring the CEO in federal court. 
for non-performance, and this is Warburg crimes. These are, are war, you can, he's in breach of trust, and I forget the Windenburg or something, that's war crimes. Estate embezzlement, uh, piracy statutes, Title 18, 1341, which is the frauds and swindles. Because they sent you uh, statements through the mail asking for a specific coin, that's fraud, that they're felons now. And that's when you take them in the federal court and everything gets shut down. You get your discharge, they go away. Look uh, at uh, Anil's, Anil's case, next class, he'll talk about it. He had like a DUI, something else, misdemeanor. They threw that shit right out with my paperwork. So I have to take these. I would, have to see, I would have to see your process and where you started from A to Z. And then I'd have to plug in from there. I just can't, you know what I mean? I can't look at it thin air saying, well, I sent this, I sent that, I got to see it. And then I'll be able to further assist you and help you out. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll check. So send oh, up, yeah. send, get, get your package together, send it to Laurel. We'll set up a time and then we'll go over everything. We'll get you out of that. We'll get you your house discharged and stuff. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. All right. So All email right. Laurel. Thank you for coming to class. Thank you for calling. Do you have any more questions, buddy? Well, I did have a question about the, uh -huh. the nine six form. Nine sixty six. Yeah, I tried to do the SS five, and Social Security shut me down. I mean, they won't <laughs> record it. Really? They won't record it with the uh, with the name change, which I put David Mark. Really? First, I put David Mark for the first name. Nothing in the middle name, right. and then my last, and then on the on line number five, I put alien allowed to work, and they wouldn't change that either. So I'm thinking maybe the, the 966 is going to get me where I'm going. The 966 liquidates your estate. That's why you have to send everything off to the Treasury, have your BC bond order in for $100 billion, your uh, indemnity bond, your bill of exchange. So I, I got off a phone call today. So so if you want to go buy a house or start up a company, you get 10 birth certificates a year. You take the authenticated birth certificate, go into Fidelity, lodge it, and get a payout. That's what someone just called me and told me today. So that's why I'm going down to New York. I'm going to see what's really good. I hate phone calls. I like to be in person. You know what I mean? I that's got funny. Some. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, get loyal to that package. Let me look it over, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. I'll help you out. All right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome, buddy. Thank you for calling. Thanks for coming in. And then uh, I'll give you my number so you shoot me a text. Okay, good. All right. All right. Thanks, Dave. Okay, thank you. All right. Hey, Peter. What's up, boss? Chad, what up? Hey, I, uh, did, did you look at that uh, private issue check I sent you last week? Hell yeah, that shit is the sauce. Really? Okay, cool. Yeah, it's um, a really, really good one. I love you got as good as the veil on there. It's beautiful stuff right there. I, I, I just wanted your opinion on that. I, um, I don't have any opinions. I got facts for you, though. <laughs> hey, facts are better than opinions. That's no, good. No, it's, that, it's, it's a beautiful piece. Uh, okay. Very well constructed. Very nice. Right now, I have that uh, sent in for a summary judgment against Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance Company, the CEO, the CFO, uh, and the law firm. And, uh, I, you know, I defaulted them on it. And I, I guess I was just wondering what you thought about it. No, it's, it's, it's good. But see, sometimes um, when, you're, when you're not doing the negative checks, I learned that the, you, Fidelity has different medallion stamps. And you have to get a medallion stamp on these checks or promissory notes or international promissory notes. That medallion stamp makes them legal tender. And then when you're printing, and then also a big thing that people miss is when you're printing these checks out, your own checks, you have to have magnetic ink. Okay. That's but how they pick all this up. You got to have the mag magnetic ink. I didn't have them on my two checks. I just ordered my magnetic ink because I had someone remind me. They were like, yo, do you have your magnetic ink for the checks? And I was like, no, I do now, though. <laughs> you know, so yeah, that's two yeah. big things. The medallion stamp, um, Fidelity has them. They have different ones. And then you need magnetic ink to print out the checks. So when they're sending them through the printers, they're able to pick them up. That's, that's part of the big reason why they're not sending them back because they're being ran through, but they're not being picked up because they don't have the magnetic ink. So they're not being able to be read. 
Okay. It it was a negative check though. It was negative twenty seven thousand oh, dollars. Yeah, no, then you're I mean you're good. Did you put it on the UCC one and assign it? Yeah, yeah. I filed it on the UCC one plus on the land Beautiful. record and on UCC. Beautiful. For the property it was paying for. Beautiful. Yep. You're fine. You're good. The only thing less, if you have them in default, if they still want to come after you, all right, it's federal court time. And we're okay, bringing yeah, and and see, I filed it with the district, my local county court, awesome. for um, you know, just a summary judgment. Beautiful. Okay, cool. Beautiful. I just wanted your thoughts on that. I appreciate no, it. No, that's amazing. That's a really great process. Let me know how it comes out and turns out. Let me know. Let me uh, tell me what they say to you or what they respond with. I, I I will. If you want, you know, I'll give you all the paperwork, everything. If it, yeah, let me know. Let me know. I'll help you out. I all right. You. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, boss. All right. Does anybody else want me to go over anything real quick? Uh, I'll call it a little early night tonight. Um, Does anybody have any more questions? I know King's got something for me. Come on, King. I need my mind stimulated. Come on. Um, were you going to um, still go over that, how to do that 82 with the social security thing? That's what I'm filling out this weekend. I did the 709 this weekend with her. We're going over that this weekend too. So I'll have that done. I'll send it to you. Okay. Yeah. Also, uh, a student in here, our friend brother, he he sent in the SS5 or FS SS5 with the 82 information on it, and I'm seeing Steve. Steve's not here, is he? No, Steve didn't make it today. Um, he had work, I think. I was talking to him earlier. Uh, Steve sent the S I'll see what he says, but I'll fill, I'll fill that out for you. I'll have it to you. I just got real busy this weekend with the 709. Let me, let me make sure I'm clear on what it does. So once you do that, there's something that you have to deal with the, uh, social security and they changed the number of the social to the, uh, to that number for that EIN rather. Right. Right. Because the 966 liquidated the social and that social security contract was, made when you were an infant. So that contract's null and void. So, so the nine, oh, go ahead, pardon me. So you're, so you're, you're coming in as a live living man that's controlling an estate saying, hey, that contract was null and void. Here's my new commerce number. Yeah, that's I like what that. Number is. I like that. I like yes. that a whole lot. Yes, and that's how I'm, all your accounts will be open with your 82 or 98. Everything, right. you know, nobody's gonna be using their social security anymore. That's you're you're away from that. Then you fill oh. out the SS five twenty one annulment. That's what I was gonna ask you. You said <laughs> um, the the nine six six right the dissolution. Okay, yes. so should that be done before we start doing any instrument? <laughs> Pardon me. No, you're you you don't need any of this stuff to cre to create your own money. Right. That's what I've I've been finding out. The secured party is just having the liens on your name for commerce. So mm -hmm. like, that's what protects you in commerce are these liens and your security agreement. Okay. Uh, so there's no real like steps one through this is you, this is where you start. This is why I say hey, authenticate your birth certificate first, then you know get your trust set up after your trust set up this it's your own learning process really right and however it comes to because everybody's situations are different somebody's going through foreclosure somebody's going through traffic court right so there are it's, i mean the attack's always the same but everybody's in a just different learning uh situation that's all okay but that relates to doing the 82 number and the social uh and the ssn it's doing the 966 dissolution right so Got that it. liquidates your estate so that's now, okay, so you look, all right, so boom, 966, you liquidated the estate. Now you get your death certificate, put your executor letter up. You have your IRS letter, 82, stating that you're the executor of the estate. You have your WA Ben showing you to be the beneficiary. UCC1 makes you the lien credit security agreement, makes you the entitlement holder. That takes your, that takes our role and tells them that their role, that the only role that is left is trustee. Again, we created the 82 and the 98 because they created the SESTA K. V trust, and then in 1933 they created the straw man, and they put the straw man within the Cesta cave. Right. So we took our straw man out with the UCC ones, and right. we collapsed the social, which is connected to the Cesta cave. Mm -hmm. We created our new estate number and put it in our 98, which is our foreign grantors trust. And now we're foreign, and we're the grantors, we're the creators. We control it, not the state. Right. And that's what that does. 
Yeah, I look for forward sure. to that knowledge. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to share everything, giving out everything that I had about. I'm not going to keep anything secret or hide intent. Because, yeah, like, you can awesome. give this, you can you give, you can give this information out to people. You can do the paperwork for them. What are they going to do with it after? It's okay to know this stuff, but to enforce it is the key. It's, you're right. Exactly. I agree with you. It's all about enforcement, and that's all the private administrative procedure. That's how the same thing that they do to us is the private administrative procedure. That's what they, they get us into a default, then they attach our, our body as surety or they attach our bank account as surety and they take it. They just foreclose on us and take it because we didn't answer. We didn't stand on our square. We didn't show that, hey, we're not dead. We're alive. We owe something here. I'll settle that. I'm the executor. I'll settle it. Where's the paperwork? Where's the negotiation? Where's if in bankruptcy, if somebody says you owe something, they have to give you the, the instrument to discharge the debt. That's why when you go buy a car, the bill of sales will pay for everything. They're giving you the instrument to buy the car. Now it's your job to offset the books with the negative account. Report the transaction, 1099A. So that's kind of intriguing. So <laughs> I have, um, now, you know, of course, I'm, um, I've been the jump off program, as they would say, for some of our study groups. So what I did is I did a similar process. I just didn't do the negative sign. But when I got my transcript back, it's showing the credit for both of the cars that I went to acquire. They just won't let me pull it down because I right. have you have return in about 10 years. <laughs> right. Because what you did, what, what you've done was created two assets for them instead of giving them the liability that offsets it. Right. So how would I resolve that in your opinion? Negative, negative check, negative 1041, register assigned to the treasury. Not notify the car company CFO of the IRS reporting, the OID reporting, and let them know that uh, you've reported to the IRS and the treasury should be offsetting and discharging your debts. So I don't need to file a 1040 or 1041? No. That's the 1041, you never have to file any of this stuff. It's all voluntary. The 1041 okay. is for the return when you want your 10 million a year after you liquidated it and you expatriated it and you want your 11 million dollars a year for administrating the estate as the executor that's when you file your seven the oid 706 709 1041 schedule k1 that's your return i like that um that's your return that class <laughs> I, like i said i just did the 709 i'm yeah. doing the 706 i did the 1041 already too and the Schedule K-1 is easy. So I'll have maybe like two or three classes. I'll be there. I'll have that done and finished for you. Because I, I can only – the person that's uh, working with me, she just he just went to a banker's banquet <laughs> and was telling me about some shit. And I was just like, all right, cool, whatever. Just how do I finish this? <laughs> you know what I mean? So exactly. um, everything, is, everything is a go right now. The newest thing is uh, I'm going to get – I'll show you guys uh, my check software, how to create it how I put my information in the checks um, and I'll, I'll redo how I assigned it. I'll go over the full, the full transaction from start to finish, how you go into the place, what you say, and then leave. Cause there's not much you say to them. All you, you know what I mean? You go, Hey, oh, I like this car. Well, give me a bill of sale. I'll take it to my bank. And you, that's all. I, mean, I used to go down there. I used to throw my hundred billion dollar bonds on the table and IRS shit. And people were looking at me like, Oh, what the, and I was just, I was like, damn, I'm not doing it right. So then I tried contacting like CFOs, and I'm like, damn, I'm still not doing it right. Then I got to the point where I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers ain't gonna know shit. Go in there, get a bill of sale, and then offset your account because the bill of sale becomes a document title. You could take that bill of sale and negotiate that to the bank if you wanted to. Right. Because there's no, they can't. There's special like people. Deposit, uh, special purpose account set up. Yes. That gives you access to the uh, TTNL. There's no more treasury tax and loan department. Mm, so then how is it working now? Everything is through the IMF. Mm. There's still the TDA, but you have to do it through your 82 number, not your social. Right. And then there's a form that Sean knows. So if you get into H&R Block, we all have block grants. So the reason why when you go into loan or go for, ask for a credit card application, they're like, oh, you're denied? Fuck that. Right. You just took my application and turned it into a bill of exchange. And that's what they do to the debtors. 
but you can't do that to a creditor because a creditor is going to take the file number to the application and report the transaction. That they're not going to leave their securities abandoned. Right. There's no being denied nothing. Anybody that wants to go get a credit card, go fill out the application and tell them you want to speak to the underwriter and you want the file number. Then you 1099A it. Mm, I like then that. Then you, you know, 1099A, 1096. Then you send, send a letter saying, hey, you better put this in my account. Or I'm filing the OID. File the 8281 the OID. If they still haven't, they sh all right, once you deposit, if you like deposit... I was going to go deposit a $5,000 check. Then I got to this negative check stuff and started sending $9 million checks out and doing all this crazy shit. But I'm going to still attempt to put in a $5,000 special deposit and see what happens. After three days, if they don't send it back, they better credit my account. If not, guess what? Everybody's coming to federal district court with me because now you just stole my security because it's leaned on, it's registered, and it's signed. Right. You're not stealing my stuff. So I'll let you know how that goes. Um. That's good stuff. But that the main thing where we all want to be is the straw man is dead. We're the executors here. I need to be paid for administrating the estate. IRS publication is 950. That's where the law comes from. And that's where it states that I'm entitled to. And that's where everybody wants to be. That's your freedom. That's your kingdom of heaven. You learn, you get there by learning how to discharge. You learn that you learn to get there by, um, setting off you learn it by court procedure court reveals who you truly are as long as you're brave enough to be who you truly are um it's all mental they have no power over you have the power over everything it's all fiction because it's all paperwork in there they're not talking to you they're not attacking you that's why it's all backwards because people are coming in the land of the dead and trying to act alive and be heard and it doesn't happen that way they kill you with paperwork, kill them with paperwork. Our paperwork has higher authority than they can ever have. It's all private administrative procedure, trust banking, equity, and securities. It's all it is. And then just enforcing your process. You guys have an unlimited trust set up. Now it's just operating in commerce with your trust. It's just that everybody's been indoctrinated through ch church and state, which are this one and the same. Your churches are connected to the state. It's all funded. It's all the same shit. And then Hollywood. That's where everybody, nobody thinks for themselves or taught themselves anything. Right. Except you guys. Everybody in the class, you guys think for yourselves. That's why you're here. That's why we vibrate on this frequency. That's why we all understand each other. There's no other group out there like this. You guys know the other groups on Facebook and the club. You've been on them. Some shit's just hogwash. We get results here. And that's what we want. People want results. Everybody out there is selling dreams and shit, man. I'm selling you what I did. Here's the proof. Here's the judgments. What more do you know what I mean? Everything else is everybody else just needs to grow into the position. That's what I'm doing. I'm just growing into it as I grow. I don't try to act like, all right, I'm done. I know it all. Here it goes. Nah, man. There's something new that pops out every day that like rocks my world, like that reading today. That shit rocked my world and made me rethink how I approach things. Because the approach is right. The well, only thing we're doing now is perfecting the approach. It's, 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 all, it's all done. This shit is all squashed. The discharges are there. So all that shit's done. Bill of complaint is ready. Memorandums is there. Procedures are there. Here comes the enforcement. That's the last step. Enforce it. Enforce your life. Enforce your will on these people. You guys are kings and queens. Take over this land. The land was gifted to you. It's your dominion, the God's last will and testament. Dominion. We were given dominion over this land. But they come in there just bureaucrats and, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, and all, they can just, they simply just say, oh, I don't know what that form is. And then boom, that, that throws everybody off. Oh, I never heard of that form. Bullshit, fam. If you haven't heard of it, let me talk to your supervisor. I know somebody's heard of this form. Don't never take no for an answer. Get what you want. As long as you're not hurting anybody or damaging property, you know, love and light. Love and light kills everything. It defeats all, cures all. Can't beat it. Love and light cannot be beat, ever. That's what squashes everything is knowing who you are. People want, there's a million ways, there's a million remedies out there. A million different codes, a different 
laws that you, you, you mean that you can invoke. You're the remedy, not this paperwork. It's just you. And then you see, you put your soul, you put your emotions into the paperwork and make it, it's not about you. You're the God that created all this. John 10, 34. They're just killing you with fiction. They're bringing you to the land of the dead and through a fiction, through corporations, through constitutions, through communities. If you don't use your head, you're just a farm product. Adam, and you you need to get uh, registered. That's your social security number. You can't be loose on the farm. Can't have that. Got a cow loose. Knows what he's doing. Doesn't want to go to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> can't show him. Can't let him talk to the other cows. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all it is. Slaves are jumping the ship. They can't have that. They better start breaking ankles again. No, oh, man, I'm not a cow. I'm a duck. I got wings. Beautiful. I'm just saying. Hey. Yep. Um, I get the whole foreign part. I, I, I did my authentication through Taiwan. Probably going to do the, uh, the, the foreign uh, uh, post office in China. But somewhere along the line, I remember uh, a conversation where it was, the discussion was, well, every state it's, is in and of itself a foreign country. It's all foreign. All these state corporations are all foreign estates through the United Nations. Okay, so, so in theory then, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there's not necessarily a necessity to get a, a post office box in another country per se, because you're already in another country. I know Manex, or yeah, Manex knows a couple of people that use their domestic PO box or right here for their 98 number. Mm -hmm. So I didn't use it. I used, like I said, I used an Australian address. I didn't use the regular PO box. I'll try to find somebody that used their PO box and I'll send them their templates. But what you're saying, yeah. yes, is correct. You, the PO yeah, box I, should be a foreign address. Because I, my, I, can't, I just can't snap that train of thought well damn i'm gonna have a, 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 a nah, box you, in another you should, country i may talk to a few people let me see if the p.o box can be utilized and i'll get back to you take me one day. all right uh and, and but yes you're, you're absolutely right um the other the other question is uh are you gonna be dropping the uh the bill of complaint tonight or is that going to be later on later on i did the bill of complaint no i'm i'm in the uh the, uh, the recording, you said you were going to do a, a recording, you and Laurel were going to do a recording going through it. I just did it. Oh, damn, man. Well, that tells you how much I had to, I've had time to watch tonight closely. <laughs> I'm, I'm at work. You know me. I'll go through. Yeah, I know. I'll go through it with you, though. Um, we'll, we'll, right. She'll email everybody, and then if you guys have questions, we'll go through it. And we'll, we'll it's, just a, it's just a broad template. We're going to, we can adjust it to each situation of the foreclosure. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll, I'll start hammering. As soon as I see it in the email, I'll start hammering at it. All right, cool. And uh, if I have any questions, I'll give a holler. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. That was all I had for you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Is there any more questions or anything you want me to go over real quick before I call tonight? Hi, this is Aubrey. I have a question. Just one second. Yeah, go ahead. Let me get your number and call you back. Just one second, PJ. Okay. Let me get your number and call you back. I'm right in the middle of a webinar. <laughs> now. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, whoever you're on the phone with, I'm charging them for my time. Okay, sorry about that. The <laughs> client called right in the middle of it. You good. I'm just messing with you. What's up? <laughs> I thought it was going to be quick, but she wanted to invite me to it an expo and let me do use, well, like share her booth with her. So, uh, nice. yeah, so I'm, a, I'm a massage therapist and esthetician. I have a spa here in Seattle. So I've known about this stuff for a while. I know how we got here. I understand Admiralty and maritime law and all that stuff, you know, to a point. I mean, I don't know how to read law that well and all that yet. So I'm learning all this and I've got getting in a little bit later. I've got your videos from earlier and I have to, you know, start watching them and stuff. But I'm getting started. So I'm getting my birth certificate and all that. 
Maybe. And as you've been talking about things, I'm just wondering how some of this stuff pertains to like my life. Like as I'm doing all this, um, right now I am incorporated. I'm an S corp. I've got a bookkeeper and an accountant and I pay them a lot of money to keep my stuff straight and keep me out of trouble. And I, I have EFTPS and I pay every month, you know, taxes. So it doesn't, so I don't get this giant bill at the end of the year, that kind of thing. So how does it all work with that? With the, I haven't heard you guys mention anything yet about like IRS and taxes and all that stuff. And like, as, and you talk about having, you talked to somebody a little bit ago about their business is a private business. So is my business not a private business since I'm a corporator? Like how, where, do, where do I stand in all this? Like where I'm at right now, what I need to do. To get... Okay. Um, what this has to do with your life, this is your life. Okay. So right. taxes and IRS. So if the IRS, the reason it's all, it's, it's uh, taxes and bills are the same thing. So if the IRS send you a bill saying you owe this in taxes, what they're saying is this how much money you have out there to recoup that you left. There's nothing that you ever have to pay because it's always a positive amount. Mm -hmm. So these accountants that you have hired, you don't need any of them. They're, the way that you have your business registered with the state, yeah, that's why it's public. Okay. Regis, okay? Register Regis. You're giving title to the king, the state. The state goes all the way up to the crown. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted it private, you just deregister everything. Private practice, notice of private practice to uh, the bureau, uh, business bureau, and then the secretary of state. And you go from there. You have your, uh, you, you do an ag lien. Your land is private. Your cars are private. And that's it. There's nothing to report. There's no, all taxes are voluntary. Well, uh, I know that, but once, so now I'm in the system. So, like, I got so, audited years ago and I had to hire somebody to deal with that. And then that didn't, uh -huh. that's a long story, but I ended up getting it put into an uncollectible status and then it finally 10 years went by and it just went away. Okay. So um, you have your own business, right? So you put yeah. the businesses on a UCC and security agreement and whatever your business has to pay out and bills, uh, equipment, employees, you get 65% back at the end of the year. That's okay. recruitment. Aubra also put your esthetician's license. I, I need to actually add mine to my security agreement too. Okay. Okay, so then basically I'm going to take myself out of the public and I'm going to become private through the UCC and everything will go there. And then, so one time throughout all this stuff, like the way I'm running my business now, I have felt pretty secure that they're not going to mess with me because after, you know, the audit and it was, a, it was, it went on for several years and I had to hire a bunch of different people and do all this stuff and, mm -hmm. um, and then one time I didn't pay them or something and they actually took money out of my account. Like they pulled like 1500 bucks out of my account, you know? So, so I do have a, a, you know, I am a little bit concerned about, you know, them messing with me. So there's no, nothing can mess with you. It's all a test. If they want to try, they're all debt collectors. If they want to come collect the debt, we'll deal with them. That's, that's the part of being a secured party because okay. you're protected in commerce and from these debt collectors and from trespassers. And if they do trespass, then you have everything in place to now you, where you can sue them and get paid. So then throughout, through this process, will I do something with the IRS and take myself out of their system? Be like, yeah, I don't um, want you anymore. Getting out of the system is liquidating your social security number. That's okay. getting out of the public really. Okay. So then the question I have for that, this is another question I've had with all this stuff. Cause I, I haven't seen, had all the classes yet. So, well then how do you open bank accounts and 98 numbers, 82 number. When you get your 82 number, one of the, uh, things that says that you could do with it is open a bank account. Okay. So this is all covered then. I don't have to worry about it. I just start at class one and work my way. I'll cover for you. If you've got questions, shoot me a text. I don't have your number to text you. You'll get it. Okay. Awesome. Thank All right. You. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, okay. So I don't have the UCC done yet or any of that. I still got to get my birth certificates. I'm going to start that next week. I got to dig out a bunch of paperwork. 
Okay. So you're saying we don't have to wait for any of that to get some money from somewhere? How, how does, where no, would you got to set your trust up. You got to have your trust set up. But to create notes and stuff like that, you don't have to be a secure party. Okay, so I, the trust I have a trust. Start operating. You want, the, you, want, you want your UCC contract trust set up. Okay, I need a UCC contract trust. Right. Because I have your, a trust that I bought. That's what you're setting up at the treasury. The okay. trust that you're going to set up is your foreign grantor's trust, and then you become foreign to the United States. Okay, now, so I become foreign to the United States, so I wouldn't be a United States citizen anymore? Nope, you don't want to be. I want to be a national. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know I do know about that. See, the problem is, is you know, it's a long story. And you don't need to hear any of it, but it's just how bad illnesses and some injuries and all this stuff. And I just, I'm gonna have to do it step by step. I don't have the money to pay for everything all at once. So that's why I was wondering where I. You know, Nothing to pay for really. It's all free except for the UCC fines are twenty bucks. The national thing is you got to pay for that. Pay for what? What national thing? The to be American national. Who told you that? My friend who told, showed me the American national website. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't done it yet, but I know it. I have it all bookmarked. Doesn't exist. Yeah, don't sweat that. The Amer there's a website, American nationals, and they do your passport and your international. Really no, yeah, no, 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 is there like a page that has a like? All right, look, I'm gonna shoot you my number. You're gonna call me tomorrow, and I'll get you on the process. I'll get you in the. I'll get you in the steps. I'll get you where to start, where to look, what to read. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Is like, where's my step one, step two, step three? I'll work, I'll work with you. All right. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Hey, You're PJ. Welcome. What's up, boss? The um, signing the UCC one and getting it at, um, notarized. Yeah. What? Uh, what kind of? When I sign it, what acknowledgement am I signing? I mean, what's the purpose of signing? I don't see where to sign this UCC one. All right, so down in the in part nine where it has the filer option. I, I see, hold on, I see part eight says optional. Or is it eight? Yeah, so down there, that's where I sign and I just have the notary sign, that's my, I stamp it, that's my signature. I put the international stamp on it, sign that, and that's it. You So you cancel the international stamp? Yeah. Okay. And then you thumbprint it. That makes you a seal. And then it's notarized. And then what I've seen, you can register it and mail it to yourself. That's what Regist I'm doing okay. when you, you say register, it means send it to yourself, registered mail. Yes. And then do what with a, and then record registered mail where? I mean, that's the. Okay, so you'll record that UCC1 and that security agreement, your executor letter, and your reservation of rights in the county that's all it needs to be reported and that gives you your status so okay so we have that package here i'm holding it i go to the notary sign it they acknowledge my signature then i mail it i mail this whole package to myself a registered mail yep and then that register mail number goes where or do i on the ucc one ucc one top right on the same page that i got notarized yes on the top right and i go record this package at the county recorder's office absolutely and then it makes it public record and that can't be altered or nothing. Okay, should this non-UCC filing that was just done, should it also be an ag lien? No, that's different. Uh, okay, this is a different, that's a different UCC. And the, the same the, UCC, but there's different verbiage in the collateral and then you check off that box, ag lien. Okay, the, um, and the PO box number is wrong on the UCC one, do we file an amendment? Which one's wrong? The P.O. box in the debtor is, eight, is missing a zero. Laurel. It's okay. I'm not blaming anybody. I want to know how to fix it. Yeah, just the UCC3 amends it. UCC3 amendment? Okay. I, I'm just amending the debtor. And should the, uh, should the Sean Hayes name also be a co-debtor? Yes. Okay. Yep, whatever all cat name you have, you list as debtors, then you're the one secured party for both of them. It's fine. Okay, okay. What did I do? Nothing. Nothing, darling. Don't worry about it. 
he got, <laughs> Laura, if you could call me after class, I'll give you my number. I like to just say hello real quick. I haven't talked to you in a month. Sure. Um, organization ID. All right. Uh, and what did you do to get that national where the airport treated you like uh, gold? I did it. I just – I didn't do anything. That's what I mean. I, I thought I was going to get arrested because I, I got pulled over, didn't go to court, didn't answer anything. And the next thing I know, my, my main man, Tony, out there was like, fly your ass out here. And I was like, fuck it. All right, let's let's do it. And so I went there and all of a sudden, I, I didn't do anything. That's what I mean. I knew I was on the right path from filing the UCC1 and security agreement, etc. Now I knew it was just the banking part. That's all I had to figure out. Let's figure it out. <laughs> Okay, so all you had was this, was this UCC one with the security agreement documents that are listed in the collateral done, and that's that it. and that flips something in their system. That's all I did. Okay, How, did you do any eighty eight thirty twos rolling the social into the estate and the estate into the yes. grant or trust? Yep, I had the eighty eight thirty two, the IRS form fifty sixes, the W eight Ben, all done before that too. And yep. this and this is on a separate than the UCC we've already done. Yes. So this, that's a follow-on step after this UCC I'm talking about. It's well, you're gonna get a, we're going to do a non-UCC for your 82 estate number, not that one. Okay. I got that one. Yep. Uh, cool, cool, cool. And the, uh, the, all the, the only other thing, like you said, the big part of this is, is, is the, ex, the exemption account every year. Right. That's the whole thing. I don't care about these mortgages. They can take yeah. it out. They, they yeah. can take, they can take everything it. else. <laughs> I just want my ten million a year. <laughs> just made ten million a year, and um, and PJ should I I have I meant to check today, but going down to the bank to um to ask them for a a debit card only, no cash withdrawals, no frills, no bells and whistles on the back end, foreign, non U, uh, non social security number or or a ninety eight account, um so that there's no benefits side to it. It's just a special special deposit account and there's right. no cash but without the with no cash withdrawal there is no benefit in the public and so it's not all of it all of it becomes non-taxable as well as being a 98. that sounds amazing and so um i'll, I'll talk to you later about that because i'm yeah, let me know. yeah it's, right. it's, a, it's a no frills account but okay yeah no how do you say it no frills yeah no frills sometimes you get um you get like uh roadside service there's like with my Bank of America Visa card. <laughs> they have, okay. There's all these benefits that I didn't know about. You have this roadside of service. I don't need AAA if I have this, this Bank of America Visa card. I get everything I have AAA offers. <laughs> there's tons of benefits on these credit or these bank accounts that you don't even know the benefits they're offering. So Bank of America, Bank of America has a judgment against me. Those bastards. <laughs> Oh, in the same vein, you, when it says the IRS sends you a notice, like a seventy-four thousand dollars notice of lien, that's how much how much credit was not accounted, how much wasn't claimed. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's so the, the, you, yes, that's left out for you to get back. So claiming, so claiming it is that an involved process? That's the recoupment. That's okay. So you record the transaction. You ten ninety nine a that you acquire it. Yeah, so we have the notice of tax lien. We ten ninety nine a the seventy four thousand that they're borrowing. Whoever the guy is borrowing it, right? Yes. Yep. Ten ninety six. Then you tell them that uh, you send out the OID letter telling them to file the OID. Then you file your OID in eighty two eighty one. Then seven zero six seven zero nine ten forty one. Okay. We haven't done the seven zero six nine yet, have we? I did the seven zero nine, but I'm gonna do it in class next time. I should have the seven zero six done. Okay. All right, I'll talk to you soon, PJ. Thank you. All right, boss. All right, you Thank you. All right, guys. I'm gonna end it tonight. It's twelve. Love you guys. Stay persistent. Stay following your dreams. We here. We're ba we're beating down these hinges on these heaven's gates. I love you guys. Work through love and light. Hotep. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Be blessed.